Yep. Welcome to Blue Springs High School, home of the Wildcats. Today we should have an exciting track match for you. Tonight is the Gary Parker Invitational. We have schools coming from all over the state of Missouri today to compete in the marquee track events of the year. I'm your host, Justin Baer, and to my side is the co-host, media teacher, and Wildcat football coach, Matt Marble. Now, Coach, you've had some experience with track and field, haven't you? Uh, yes, I was a coach uh, at Blue Springs High School for the first, I don't know, six years when I was uh, teaching and also ran track in high school actually under Gary Parker who the meet is named after so I not only was a runner under him but also was able to be a coach in his last year in coaching so that was pretty special so I know a little bit about track. <laughs> yeah and coach Gary Parker is one of the greatest coaches in Blue Springs school history. He coached track for over 30 years for Blue Springs and won a couple of championships in the early 90s. It's no wonder this meet in tr of track and field is named after him. Yeah and you know, Coach Parker is a legend around here. Can you hear us now? Oh, excellent. So that whole intro you just did, it was phenomenal. <laughs> we didn't get that. This is our first time live streaming. Yeah. Uh, okay. So That's all right. So we got our technical issues out of the way. We're not going to have any more of the rest of... Uh, Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. <laughs> but we are here at the Gary Parker Track Meet. Who are you? Uh, I'm Justin Bear. I'm going to be your host. To my, to my side is your co-host, uh, Wildcat football coach and media producer, Matt Marble. Yeah, and uh, I also used to be a track coach. They couldn't hear that before when we talked about that. But I used to be a track coach here and was also a track runner for Blue Springs High School uh, back in the day. So I was actually able to run for Gary Parker, which this n meet is named after, which is pretty cool. Um, and as you know, Coach Parker is just a legend I as far as coaching goes. Uh, was one of those coaches who was just phenomenal to not only be an athlete for, but also be uh, a coach with in my first year of coaching track. And uh, you couldn't, you, you can't say enough good things about Coach Parker. So we're we're excited to be here uh, at a meet named after him. He was a coach who was uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame. Uh, while he was still coaching in 1996, which was which was pretty awesome, uh, and so it's it's going to be a great meet today. Yeah. Uh, so with that, we have a loaded field of competition with 21 teams on both the girls mm -hmm. and the guys side. Um, and coach, let's start with the girls team. What are some big names and big matchups we should look forward to today? Uh, well, today we've got Lee Summit West, who is the uh, three-time defending state champion for the girls, uh, and so they're coming with a strong team, Kirkwood and Trinity Catholic. They both have strong teams. They came all the way over here from St. Louis uh, to be out here on the, on the track in the events today. Uh, there's some really good vaulters. Gabrielle Hoke, you're going to see a little bit later. She has a jump of 11.7, which is over a foot uh, higher than the next closest. So she's a special athlete there in the vaults. As we said before, Lee Summit West on, on the girls' side uh, just have some phenomenal distance runners. They have uh, 1,600 runner in, in Madeline Hill. Um, Audrey Parsons, the 800 runner, coming in at 218. Uh, we got Ginger um, Murniex, uh, 3200 uh, stud, and Jessica Haney, who was uh, a high jumper, the jump 5'8 at uh, the Arcadia meet in California and actually won that event, which is a national event. Uh, and so we're going to see a lot of great performances here on the girls' side. Yeah, and now let's shift over to the bi to the boys' side. What are some big names that we should be looking forward over there? Uh, Cooper Wise uh, from Kirkwood. He has a jump, a high jump of 6'10", uh, and so this er early in the season uh, is going to be a big one. We'll talk a little bit more about the boys right after the national anthem.
All right. Uh, going back to the boys, um, we have uh, Darian Smalls from Battle who jumped in the vault 15-7. Um, I believe that was a mark from last year, so it'll be interesting to see if he can match that this year. Uh, we also have in the vault Will Hull, which is the son of our assistant activities director. Uh, and so we got a lot of good matchups going on here. Um, and I think first up we got the 4x8 who's coming up soon, but uh, the weather is uh, a little bit of a factor here. As you can see, our, our papers are blowing around all over the place. Um, and right now... We are going to go to our sideline reporter. We have a sideline reporter. Did you know that? I, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> we have a sideline reporter, um, Aislinn Plumberg. Aislinn, can you hear us? Aislinn, can you hear us? Can you hear us, Aislinn? Aislinn, you copy? You can hear us? Yeah, now. All right. Hey, how are things looking down there? Tell us how things are looking. Uh, hey guys, the weather down here on the track is definitely not ideal. The wind is very sharp and cold, but um, I'm seeing a lot of energy and work in the competitors' warm-ups, so hopefully they can make this a great meet. I don't know they'll pull through. So, so Aislinn, do you think that the uh, weather is going to be much of a factor here today? You're a track athlete. You, you, you run track. Uh, do you think it's going to be much of a, of a factor here today? Uh, I definitely think that the competitors are going to do great. I mean, the wind is definitely very hard to run against, but I know that they'll they'll pull through and they'll make it an, uh, an amazing uh, meet. All right. And, Aislinn, are you excited for your first time live streaming and being our sideline reporter? I am. I'm a little bit nervous, but this will turn out great, and it will be a lot of fun. <laughs> Hopefully I can do it again. Uh, yeah, it's going to be great. Well, we appreciate that, and we'll be coming back to you shortly. All right. Thank you, guys. Well, we're expecting some great matchups today on the track and the field, but we do want to know, let the viewers know at home that due to some technology restrictions and due to some of the throwing vents being moved to a different location, we won't be able to get those going today. Um, but know that we will try, to keep, try our best to keep you up to date as the final results come in. All right, and it looks like we're ready for the girls 4x8, where Lee Summit West comes in with a top time of 9.50, followed by Blue Springs, with a time of 9.54, and those look to be the two front runners really in this event. Yeah, don't sleep on Park Hill, though. They've had some good success in this event before. They have, they have. And Kirkwood, I know, has got the third best time, and they are definitely looking to, uh, to make some noise here as well. And the runners are on their mark, and they're off. Now, the 800 is such a, a tough race, and I know that, you know, sometimes... There's a little bit of an argument of whether the 400 or the 800 is is uh, the tougher event, but I tell you, the, you know, when you've got two laps and you've got to go all out for two laps, obviously there's some strategy involved, but that that is a difficult race, especially in this wind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the wind is going to play a major factor today, coming right into the runner's face for most of the events that are going to be happening today. Yeah, you can really, uh, uh, I mean, I know the audience can't see this, but that, that wind that you saw from the flags is right down this home stretch. And so as these athletes come around this corner, uh, you know, you might see a little change in the, uh, in the speed coming around here. All right, as the runners come down the stretch, See, look, Blue Springs is hanging in there. Kirkwood, like we thought, is there. Grain Valley. Grain Valley is surprised up there. Oh, you can see Lee Summit West, the Titans, coming on the outside lane right there. You see making a move. That runner looks strong. That is Haley Harden, I believe, from Lee Summit. And as they enter around their first lap, Grain Valley is the surprise first place lead, but it looks like Lee Summit's making a move on the outside. And really, making a move on the outside is, is pretty difficult. I mean, if you just know you're a stronger runner than someone you're running against, then you can go ahead and pass them on the outside. Most of the time, right here on this back stretch is where you see people passing, like Lee Summit West just did. And it looks like Elena is making a pass as well, taking in that second spot right behind the Lee Summit West. Harden. She's really looking strong. You can see her elongating her stride a little bit. She's keeping those knees up pretty good. 
right now it looks like the f top four runners are really starting to tear away from the rest of the pack. Yeah. They're showing some good strength here. We'll see now that the wind is in their face. Blue Springs trying to make a move now. Making a, a move. Strong, strong power. Strong power. Makes a move right on the outside of Lee Summit West. Passing her. Blue Springs is now in the lead. We'll see how this As we go into goes. the baton passes. Clean, clean tosses to both of them. And what was really key there for Lee Summit West is to maintain that inside the, the inside lane um, and not get passed right away off of the handoffs. So that forced Blue Springs to kind of fall back behind her. As they start coming around the back stretch, we see the two runners of Lee Summit West and Blue Springs really start to edge out. Park Hill passed Grain Valley on the baton pass and started to make some distance. But now it looks like the two runners are starting to clear themselves out while Grain Valley is trying their best to catch up. Yeah, and Blue Springs runner uh, Guinevere uh, Deterding. Is that how you pronounce it? I think it's Deterding. Deterding. We're going to mess up names all day long because we don't have the <laughs> phonetic We're, tr we're trying uh, our best spelling though. here. But she's a really strong runner, and you can see she's hanging in there. And it's not a bad strategy right here to uh, be right behind and draft, especially with this wind that now that Lee Summit West runner has to take the brunt of all that wind yeah. and, and, and Guinevere gets to hang back a little bit, conserve some energy. Liberty North is our fourth place is our fifth place runner with Warrensburg in our sixth hole. And then I believe that is actually Park Hill. I think Kirkwood is the in third place up. Oh, that makes a lot more yeah. sense. Around that back stretch, it looks like our third place runner is trying to catch real close. And here's where I would expect Guinevere to make a move. And, and she there's does. the move. Yep. She's a strong runner, and that was smart to conserve energy on this on this home And now stretch. she's starting to get some distance away from the summit runner. Baldwin. And that'll be big if they can. And it looks like the Kirkwood runner just passed Baldwin as well. And it'll be key if we can maintain this kind of lead with this third runner, and then you've got from Blue Springs, Tessa Valdivia going up the, the heading up the anchor. That'll be key for him. Nice. Clean handoff, good yeah. extension. Guinevere did a great job of taking the lead and then extending it, giving her teammate. 25 meters. And you can see who's that for Blue Springs. Jaden Ross? Freshman. West. Reese Howard is right. Oh, sorry. That's Reese Howard. Blue Springs. Jaden Ross is at least I'm in North. West. See, I told you. I told you we make mistakes all, <laughs> all track me long. I don't know what I'd do without you. <laughs> yeah. Track here. Just don't let it go to your head. You're still a student <laughs> in my class. I can <laughs> adjust your grade accordingly. Reese is keeping up a good pace, but it looks like the senior from Kirkwood Meredith Lang is starting to get some distance, as well as the freshman Jaden Ross from Lee Summit West starting to make a move on the second place spot. Yeah, that is a, that is impressive that they got Lee Summit West has got two freshmen on their squad, and they just went or are going back to back here, and we'll see how strong they can finish. Reese Howard seems to be extending her lead over Meredith Lang from Kirkwood. Yeah, you can really, this is a time where, especially getting a lead to, to give it to Tessa Valdivia, who's one of the best distance runners in the state. 
uh, that's going to be big. Yeah, Tesla de Feldivi, just to even add on to that, was among the top three in the cross country, which is mm -hmm. all long, long distance. Yeah, yeah. And so she's really strong. I, w I would bet with this lead, uh, we could say the Blue Springs is in a pretty <laughs> good position here. Uh, we still got to watch for the handoff, but so far they've all been pretty clean. Yep. Nice. And a good handoff. And there she goes, extending the lead even further. You can see she just runs so efficiently. I mean, she's got, starting off here, a sprinter's form. Here on the third place spot, it looks like Grain and Lee Summit West might start to battle for it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Grain Valley is finishing with Lily Ogle, a sophomore. And Lee Summit West is finishing with Caitlin Pessinger, a senior. It'll be interesting to see how those two go at it for this entire race. You can see Tessa just so efficient. And as we can see that Kirkwood and then Lee Summit West and Grain Valley. We thought Grain Valley was going to give a little bit of a fight there. Yeah. Lee Summit West is extending that lead a little bit for the fourth place. Liberty Third North place. and Warrensburg for the fifth place spot. Looks like they might have a battle going into the last lap. As they near the, as Tessa nears the final stretch, it looks like she might have the possibility to lap battles Emma Totlow. Yeah, and look and look at Tessa here. She's just finishing so strong. I mean, for someone who's who's not so tall in stature, this wind is not bothering her whatsoever. No, she's got that efficient form. She's finishing through, and Blue Springs is going to take this one fairly easily. And Tessa looks like she comes in first with Kirkwood coming in second. And Lee Summit West in third. And that was, uh, I know there, there's still several runners finishing. That was a, that was a good first event. Blue Springs yeah. looking strong. Blue Springs is looking real strong. All right, looks like was that Liberty North? Warrensburg. Park Hill. <laughs> Liberty. Staley. Lincoln College Prep.
<laughs> okay, now we're going to go to Island And Island you have got the Blue Springs 4x8 there that just won that event pretty handily. Hi, guys. I'm here with the girls who just received first in the 4x8. They're from Blue Springs. How do you girls feel after just winning that? Awesome. <laughs> Very strong. And being the first race of this meet, how did you guys prepare yourself to run almost immediately? Uh, we were just excited because our last meet um, ever running on the track was Blue Springs. So <gasps> pretty excited to start the meet off on a good note. So you girls are all seniors? So you guys, you know, how do you feel about your last season of track? It makes me feel kind of sad, but I have to move on, you know. <laughs> yeah, you'll, you'll go on to great experiences afterwards. Back to you guys in the press box. All right, thank you very much. And we have got the four by eight boys that just started. Thank you guys. You're Did that? All right, so leading the heat is the Blue Spring squad, starting off with David Bashy. He's a sophomore runner, so we'll see how he starts out with us. All right, and it looks like Blue Springs and Rockhurst uh, are going to be battling here for first, along with Staley. They've got a good time as well. All right, as they turn the first corner here. And I will say, I talked with Coach Cusack earlier, and this isn't, this isn't Blue Springs A squad, which, which happens quite a bit in track meets to where maybe there's an injured runner or maybe you're saving a guy or it's not in their training cycle to run a certain event. And so, you know, you sub in other guys sometimes. And so that's kind of what Blue Springs has done today. So it'll be interesting to see how some of these uh, younger guys or, or some of these guys that don't have as much experience in this compete today. Yeah, as they enter their first lap, it looks like uh, Rockers start with the lead and now they're starting to take a very commanding lead with Kirkwood and the rest of the pack following closely behind. Rockhurst got a great distance program and uh, they're they're always strong. Well in most sports but <laughs> they're, they're pretty good at, at boys distance as well. Sometimes that hurts a Blue Springs guy to admit that. <laughs> As they make their second turn, it looks like Rockhurst is in first, followed by Staley and... Who is that? Grandview. Grandview, the wow. Bull Grandview Bulldogs look like her. And Grandview takes strong. the lead. He finished real strong. Who, who was that? R Rayvon Epson? A sophomore. Wow. And now leading for Grandview, we got Reginald King. Another sophomore. Very young, very good squad for Grandview. They came out of nowhere to take that first place lead. Yeah, they came in with the ninth fastest time. So we'll see. Sometimes coaches in, eight, in the 4 by 8 there'll be different strategies. Sometimes they'll front load with their one of their best runners up front and then hope that you get a little bit of a lead or you stay with that first pack. Uh, and so it's you know it's a positioning game. There could there could be some teams that have saved their strongest runner for the end or the third leg. It's just hard to tell the strategy. But yeah, Grandview strategy at the beginning was to now as we make a move here, we got Staley mm -hmm. coming in first as of right now, with Grandview in second and Rockers all pretty much closely bunched together, followed by pretty much the rest of the pack. Yeah, that front runner looks pretty strong, but that Rockers runner is also pretty smooth. I. I'd be willing to bet he makes a move here soon. He's got a long stride. He's a little bit taller than some of those other guys. Staley out in front, maintaining strong. He he did not. Uh, he did not fall off at all. Mm -mm. No, he stayed very strong after the baton pass, keeping his team in it, and then making the move to finally give him the lead. And now it looks like Grandview's starting to dip off a bit after a really strong start, falling all the way back into sixth place. This Staley runner is impressive. 
I thought I was, we were going to see him die off, but he yeah, is Preston finished Wheeler strong. Preston Wheeler is a senior. And Rutgers has got a pretty fast turnover right now. Looks like he's trying to close the gap with the Staley. And, and he looks is. To, appears to be working, but we'll see how that works later on as they start running more. Yeah, sometimes you get really excited in that first lap and you want to catch him and make it all up at one time. If you're a really strong runner, you can do that. <laughs> or if you've gone out too fast, then you could die off. Mm -hmm. Looks like we're going to have an interesting battle between Kirkwood. We'll see if this Rockhurst runner can maintain that quick turnover in the second lap. He, lap. he used a lot of energy there to catch him in those yeah. first 200 meters. <clears throat> Looks like the Rockhurst runner is making a move on the outside and actually passed the Staley runner. He Seems like he is in control. And now he's starting to build up speed, so maybe he is the strong runner that he led on to be. Yeah, that's very impressive. I mean, he... He not only caught him, but he a 20 got a meter lead. lead. Now he's got a 25 meter lead on him. So he he made up 50 meters in one 800 leg. That was impressive. Staley appears to be dying off. Kirkwood coming in real close. Yeah. And now we'll see if Kirkwood can can catch up, get themselves a silver medal. Looks like Rockers has pretty much extended their lead. Yeah, I would say unless unless we're we're gonna get a major breakdown here on the second lap, it looks like Rockers is, is gonna take this one. Yeah. And Rockhurst Wesley Porter is a junior, is looking real strong. He's looking real good. And I know these 800 runners, every time they hit the back stretch, they're just really excited because now they got that big old wind at their back and can kind of carry them a little bit. And then they come around the turn and get a wall of wind in the face. He's still keeping his turnover. Very uh, nice. Porter there is still keeping that turnover going pretty good here for finishing the 800. In eighth place, Liberty. Seventh place, Park Hill. Sixth place, Warrensburg. Fifth place, Liberty North. Fourth place, Grain Valley. Third place, Lee Summit West. Second place, Kirkwood. And today's winning, winning team in the girls 4x800 meter relay is Bruce Green. There you go. Rockers takes first in the men's 4x800 with Staley coming in second and Kirkwood in third. And for the viewers just tuning in now, we welcome you to Blue Springs High School. Uh, the events you missed were the girls 4x800 where Blue Springs came in first, Kirkwood came in second, and Lee Summit West come in third. It was a strong four by Rockhurst. And as we said before, I know Blue Springs had come in with the top seeded time, but that was with some other guys running. And they yeah. had subbed some guys in because it wasn't in their training cycle to run this. And so uh, it, it, that's why Blue Springs was a little bit farther back than, than their time would suggest. 
Yeah, and Staley's still got a year with a good co with a good chunk of their core left, only having one senior. Mm -hmm. That four by eight is always exciting. Just looking forward to stay. That four by eight is always exciting because um, you've got some of the best athletes, the toughest athletes on the track, running in a relay together. Um, and for me, the four by eight is right up there with the four by four in terms of just excitement and 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 toughness that you see guys. Uh, and girls gutting it out at the end. You think the winds died down at all? I don't, uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. It certainly has up here, but we also covered with four and a half walls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've got a we've got a nice view here to look out into the track, but I'm not. I'm not upset about not being out in that wind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. So it looks like they're getting set up for the hurdles. Um, this is one of my favorite events. Not just because I ran and coached the <laughs> hurdles, but it's just, it's, it's so exciting. It's a, it's a great mix of just pure speed, but also you got to have excellent timing. Um, you got to have rhythm. And it's an event where... Also, things can go really wrong in a hurry. And so uh, it is, it's one of the most exciting events. Yeah, it's one of the few events where you may be seated as the top seed, but because of just how many things can go wrong, you might not get exactly where you're hoping to get. Yeah, as we're getting set up for these hurdles, and the reason I was talking about the wind is when you have a, especially in a hurdle race, when you have a wind at your back, which we're running, they're running the 110 hurdles going the opposite way that you would normally run them on a track, uh, partly due from the wind and partly so they can keep the finish line in the same area um, for all the other events and not have to, you know, move a bunch of camera equipment, and so... That's why we're running it the opposite way, and it does make a difference. Yeah. When you are running with the wind at your back at a hurdles, you have to get what we call down. you got to get down over the hurdle much quicker uh, because if you don't, you're going to find that when you get to hurdle 7, 8, 9, you're going to be too close to the hurdle because that wind is going to push you faster in between the hurdles. You're going to cover more ground than you're used to, and so these athletes really have to make sure – that they are snapping down over the hurdle so they don't all of a sudden seven, eight, nine in the tenth hurdle, they're too close to it and now they gotta slow themselves down. All right, now we're going to go to Eisen with the winners of the boys 4x8. Rockers. Hi, so Eisen. I'm down here with the boys who just won, won the 4x8 Rockers. How do you guys feel? What's going through your head after winning this? Uh, I mean, it was just a good time out here with the boys. We wanted to go out and compete. We knew it was going to be a good race, but we knew we had uh, 
we have what it took to win. So, all right, good job. You guys did good. Back to you guys. Sorry, we had to. All right, we've got the second heat of the girls 100. We apologize for missing the first heat. <laughs> we're learning at this thing too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we've got the second. There were only three runners in that first heat, uh, and it looks like in this second heat, right here we've got Olivia Hub, Krista Steele, Juprice, Makonga Mabona, Janice Boone, Aaron McGinty, and Halia Boyden. Yeah. What are some big num big names that you're looking forward to just from looking off of it, just real quick? Well, as we get to you know the finals cuz cuz how they set up things um oh. for those okay. of you that might be watching that that it's haven't been to a track in a while what they do is or how they're handling it here is there's not any finals uh but the last heat that they run will be comprised of all the fastest times that have been entered and so really that final heat that we run is usually the fastest heat and the winner of that is usually ends up being um the champion and so we've got a couple athletes from Lincoln prep that we're going to see in the fourth heat that have turned in some really fast times of sub 14 times uh, and and for girls that's impressive especially since those are freshmen and sophomores so we'll we'll definitely look forward to seeing that in heat four but now we got heat two coming up yeah which I mean even heat two doesn't have any two two bad times so it'll be interesting to see how it goes All right, we're ready, ready for the start. And you'll see some of those athletes are using traditional blocks and some of them are using stand blocks. Looks like there's been a little bit of reseeding here. It's a little bit off from our heat sheets. <laughs> Which happens, but that was a pretty nice race. That was a clean race. Was like, yeah. Just a couple couple hurdles hit, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, whenever, whenever I was running hurdles, I'd probably hit four or five during a race. Uh, but if you just if you just nick them just a little bit, then you know you're really getting down over the hurdle. Obviously, if you hit them enough to knock them down, then that slows you down. But you really want to you want to be close in this 100 race, 110s for the boys. Okay, it looks like there was a little bit of reseeding going on. That uh, Now we've got some updated information. So it looks like this, we're only going to have three heats, and this is the final heat that we have here. Okay. So now we're back on track. Um, in here we've got, uh, looks like Pitch McGee from Battle has a top time of, of 1475. And there they go. Looks like it's a strong like battle Talia between Talia Battle Emerson and Liberty, Liberty North. North. Yeah, that's Talia Emerson from Liberty North. She is challenging. It looks like our battle runner is going to come in first. Okay. Paige McGee. Yeah, that was a that was a great race with I mean, Talia Emerson coming in second and holding her own for most of that race yeah she she pushed her to that seventh hurdle and then you could see that um 
Paige, you know, had a, had a really good last three hurdles. And coming off that, coming off that last hurdle, you could definitely see the mm -hmm. speed that she had. Um, when she went over that last hurdle, she shot off that thing and, and was able to secure the lead. So good, good for her. Now you'll see on the track that they're moving them back to the boys, uh, the boys marks, and you're going to see them raise them up a little bit. So they're going to be raised up about six inches. And uh, we just got word that we got the final call for the 110. So as they transfer these things over, the boys are getting ready to go. Okay, and it looks like Island is down there now with our winner, uh, Paige McGee from Battle, the, the winner of the 100-meter girls' hurdles. Hi, guys. I'm with Paige from Battle High School. So how do you feel after running in the cold, colder weather? Um, it's not what we've usually been running in, but I'm just glad I was able to have a clean race and get through it. I uh, haven't had any pra real practice over 100 hurdles in a couple days, so... I'm just happy I was able to have a good race. Did the wind have any effect on your race? Um, I would say it had a little effect. I don't always have the best start, but I think that going with a tailwind helped me um, get out of the blocks a little faster than I usually do. Well, you did a great job. Back to you guys. All right, and it looks like the boys... Like the boys are getting ready for their 110 race. All right, so who do we got here in this first heat? Uh, so in lane two, we've got a sophomore from Raytown, Deshaun Collins, a sophomore from Blue Springs, Robert Woodcock, a junior from Liberty North, Benjamin Cole. A senior from Fort Osage, Kristen Chapman, and in lane six, a sophomore from Staley and Ethan Kirtley. And off they go. All right, and you can see these are some runners that really got to work to get, get down over the hurdle. I know there's, there's several young runners or runners that maybe aren't used to running varsity. And it looks like our winners in the first heat is going to be Benjamin Cole from Liberty North. And really, that's good experience for those guys. Um, because you'll see as we progress to a little bit of the faster heats, the difference in technique. And so those guys are getting some good experience coming out here. Especially it will be challenging. Uh, with, uh, like we've said before, the wind at their back uh, makes it challenging for some of those guys. And in the second heat, it looks like we have several guys who uh, who have times around the, the 17 uh, or so mark and really uh, 
again, to to compete at a state level, then most athletes are under 15. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it becomes it becomes really challenging as you get closer to those 15s to drop under that thing. And kind of once you do, then you, you feel what it feels like. And that's kind of a barrier. Once you can break that, then you feel pretty good. And later on in the in the final heat, we'll see a couple guys that, that have some sub-15 times, which will be exciting to watch. Including a sophomore from Lee Summit. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to see Johnny Brackens because he is a great athlete. He is a in great athlete. multiple events. So we're you're going to hear that name today several times. But we're not ready for that yet. We're at uh, heat number two. Now, with heat number two, I'm really excited to see Philip Caldwell, who's a freshman who's hitting below the 17 mark. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's really good. You, you think some a freshman at this point in the season under 16, you'd like to see him get to around 15-8 by the end of the season, and he definitely has a chance to do that. Uh, we'll see if, if this wind helps him. We're doing good. We've got a got our Liberty runner. Yeah, our Liberty runner. He's looking pretty good. His trail leg was dying a little bit, and his, his arm was going back quite a bit, but he still was fairly smooth going over the hurdle. Looks like Michael Book wins that, and Philip Caldwell ends up coming in last. Yeah, I don't know if I don't know if he just had a bad race. Um, you know, it's hard to tell. Those hurdle races. Yeah, they can go every which way. Uh, you know, I also see on our sheet here there's a little X marked by his time, so I don't know if um, maybe that's something that somebody else was subbed in for or wasn't exactly accurate. Yeah. Overall, though, it was very exciting, especially for the second and third place spots. Yeah. Where you had some really close competition. As we go into our third heat, in lane one, we've got William Lennard from Grain Valley. James Olson from Rockers, Gabriel Billingsley from our crosstown rivals over here at Blue Springs South, Joseph Stewart from Warrensburg, Christopher Olisha from Battle, Kean Hergens from our very own Blue Springs, Eric Hill from Rockers, and Emmanuel Sherry from Battle. They're not making it easy on you on those names, are they? No, they really did Especially didn't. when they don't give us like correct pronunciations or uh, of those. Yeah, and, and we just got them like. 15 minutes ago, so you're doing a great job. <laughs> I do see that it looks like lane two is open. Um, so it looks like maybe uh, James Olsen from Rockhurst uh, has dropped out. Might be going through some injuries or maybe just wasn't able to make today even though he thought he could. Yeah. It looks like also lane seven, Eric Hill is not there. Yeah, I was maybe wrong. maybe. No, well, no, it wasn't. No, it doesn't look like he's there yeah, unless so he's both. It's hard for us to see from up here, but it doesn't. It doesn't look like he's there. So both Rockhurst runners, maybe they just decided to to sit the hurdles out. Yeah. So maybe we'll see him later on as the events go longer. Yeah. Blue Spring South hurdle coach is one of my very good friends, Dan Dunberg, and so we're gonna we're gonna see what he's got his South hurdlers doing here. There we go. Oh, he's coming on strong here. Mm, looks like the Warrensburg runner took it. I thought maybe South was gonna challenge him for a second, but then Warrensburg which took, is surprising because Warrensburg for the first three or four hurdles seem to knock down every single one. Yeah, and again, some guys feel comfortable with that. They feel comfortable hitting the hurdle and continuing on. Uh, they're they're kind of towing that line between hitting it too much and, and being too far over it, and so I don't, I don't mind that. Yeah. Now, as we enter our final heat, look for a good battle in our fourth and fifth lanes between senior DeMonte Blanks from Grandview and Johnny Brack is the sophomore from Lee Summit. Expect to hear his name said a lot throughout this thing. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see 
him go against uh, DeMonte from Grandview because they got very close times. Uh, DeMonte comes in with a 14-5-5. Uh, Johnny comes in with a 14-7-1. So especially in this wind and a hurdle race, you know, two tenths don't really mean that much. So we'll see. We'll see how they both of them adapt to this win. And this right here, the last meet, I mean, sorry, the last heat of the hurdles is something that's that's very exciting. Yeah. Again, as a former hurdler and a, and a hurdle coach, uh, I'm a, I might have to I'm gonna have to lean out of the booth on this <laughs> one to watch this one. I'm gonna have to break I'm gonna have to break out the stopwatch on this one too. <laughs> My stopwatch and skills. Once a coach, always a coach. Oh, Johnny's looking strong, but oh, DeMonte. DeMonte that was a really starting to pull ahead. Great third, fourth hurdle by DeMonte. That was nice. That was nice. I had my watch going, but I was so excited. <laughs> I was so excited watching it that I forgot to stop it. Because DeMonte looked really smooth. You saw through that. Really, really the fourth, the fourth and fifth hurdles where he just took that race over. Yeah. And I mean, it was, it was sudden and it was gradual. It wasn't one of those things where it just kind of happened over time. It just was like he hit over the hurdles. And there he goes. That was nice. He looks smooth. That's two runners now that we've seen that have just, they may not have been the tallest, but they're just very efficient that they've in their running. Yeah. With DeMonte and Tessa earlier in the 4 by 8 Yeah, and I'm taking a look right now to see if if DeMonte runs the 300s. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't look like he does. You can see that speed there. You know, sometimes guys will just run the one tens. I'm I'm interested to see if he's in any other events because he looked pretty quick there. Yeah, he looked real good. They're walking over by the forty yard line to the left side. All right, we're going to go back down to the track with Island, who is with the 110-meter hurdle champion of the meet, DeMonte Blanks from Manview. Hi, guys. So um, as you were running, I saw you knocked over a hurdle. So what was going through your head as that fell over? Um, basically, I just thought, you know, just got to keep on running, make sure I stay true to your form and just keep running, run hard. Did the wind have any effect on your race at all? No, not really. Uh, my coach basically taught me to stay low, stay uh, in my form, so the wind doesn't really affect me, stay low. And basically, I just beat the wings. Are you in any uh, other events in this meet? Uh, yeah, I'm in a 4 by 2 and a 3 in the hurdles. All right, well, good luck. You did great. Back to you guys. All right, and Eisen, before we leave you, um, did he? Uh, we couldn't hear. Was he in any other events today? I'm sorry, what was that? What was that? <laughs> oh, I said, is he in any other events day? Did you catch that? Did you get me? Aizen, can you hear me? 
Okay, we we lost eyes in a little bit, but uh, I think she said Demonte was in some other events, and uh, so we'll look forward to seeing him. Yeah. So now we've got the hundred, the speedsters. Looks like we got the hurdles cleared off the track, and now we got pure speed coming pure at you. Pure speed. <laughs> so as we begin with the. 100 meter dash. We've got the girls going up first. In our second lane, we've got Haley Pham, a freshman from Staley. Alexis Heed, a sophomore from Staley. Ebony Hurst for Grain Valley. She's a senior. Nyasia Wright, a freshman for Lincoln College Prep. Jose. Oh, Ashidu Jose, a freshman from Liberty North. And Keandra Reed, a junior from Raytown. Our fastest time coming in here is going to be Ebony Hurst, the senior from Grand Valley, running a 13.8. Look for her in lane four. And then joining us from Blue Springs South, the hurdle coach, Dan Sandberg. Hey. Dan Sandberg. Is it Dan Sandberg or Dan Sunberg? Sunberg. Sunberg. Thanks, Coach. Sunberg. We got Dan, we got Dan Sunberg here. And, Coach, you had some hurdlers in that event. How did you think they did? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, with this wind, you'd, you'd want to put down a pretty good time. You don't know when you're going to get a good tailwind like this again. But you got a guy that's been hurt for a while, Gabe. Coming back, Gabe Billingsley trying to come back from a little bit of a high ankle sprain, so it was good to see him have a good race. He made a PR, so that'd be good for good for a guy like that's confidence. That's good. And and the the hundred meter champion, Demonte Blanks for Anview, who came in with a seed time of fourteen five five. He looked pretty smooth over those hurdles. Yeah, yeah, that guy looks like he's gonna end up having a pretty good year. Pretty yeah. Pretty yeah. quick over those hurdles. Yeah, if you can if you can post a fourteen five at this point in the season, then you're you're sitting pretty sitting good. Pretty good, yeah. It'd be interesting to see what he does next week at KU, and you know that's kind of the warm up warm up to state, you know, going forward. Yeah, well, coach, thanks for stopping by, and you got a little bit of pizza there. Yeah, got Is that into, good. Got into the uh, treasure box over here. There you go. Well, we've got our first. Heat of the 100-meter dash for the girls underway. And we want to thank Coach Sunberg, who's one of the most popular coaches and teachers at Blue Springs South because he's so good looking. Nobody could see that, <laughs> but you could hear it through his voice. He's one of my very best <laughs> friends, so I have, to, I have to mess with him a little bit. All right, we're ready for our second heat, right? Yeah. Second heat of the girls' hundred. Yeah. So in our in our first lane, we got Erica Williams, a sophomore from Lee Summit, Tania Ray, a senior from Lee Summit, Lauren Giddy, a sophomore from Lincoln College Prep, Tasha Saxon, a senior from Liberty, Mackenzie Scully, a freshman from Kirkwood, Tashell Thomas, a sophomore from Raytown South. Jazaria Southhall from Battle, and Jordan Dukes, a sophomore from Grandview. So uh, this is the youngest heat we've seen as of as of recently. Yeah. Sophomores and freshmen. We got a couple seniors thrown in there. So we'll see how these ladies do. And as you know, the start of the hundred is so key. I mean, the start makes the race. Mm -hmm. If you can have a good start, good drive phase for that first 
20 to 30 meters or so, that really sets you up. Yeah. And you'll see, for those of you watching at home or hopefully hopefully not watching in the car, that would be dangerous. Very dangerous. Yeah. And we like safe drivers around here. But uh, you want to be looking for, are these athletes, are they popping up right out of the blocks? Or are they staying down in a drive phase? Looks very heated going into this final bunch. Just all right in the same area. Looks like Liberty is going to take it. Tasia Saxon, our senior from Liberty. So overall, a very exciting heat, especially for that the second, third place spot where a lot of the runners were pretty close together. Yeah, and for a runner like Tasia, who is just, she was just, her seed time was just outside making that top eight for the final heat. You know, she, she put together a good race there, and if, uh, for, uh, sorry for that just out of that third heat she put together a good race and you never know when you might sneak into a top eight from another heat if you just have a really good one and a couple other people in those later heats don't form well so you know for these athletes I know the coaches are telling them hey even though you're not in the quote-unquote fast heat you win your heat and have a really good race and you might get in that top eight yeah and so now we've got and our third heat of the women's 100, we got Tiffany Saxton, a junior from Liberty. Tylee Whitmill, a senior that goes here to Blue Springs. Destiny Kelly, a junior from Lima West. Shelby Butts, a senior from Raytown. Kylie Windblinger, a junior from Liberty North. Nia Shields, a sophomore from Raytown South. Carly, Caroline Wilson, a senior from Kirkwood. And Delana Fletcher, a sophomore from Lee Summit West. Yeah, and we got to give a shout out to Tylee Whitmill. Who's a Wildcat TV Wildcat member. Wildcat TV, represent. Yeah. So let's see how she does in this race. We're going to be cheering her for her. If she does well, maybe we'll make her do a story on the track meet. <laughs> Here we go. Looked like Tylee had a pretty good drive phase. Tylee, good start. Very strong. But it looks like Shelby, Shelby from Raytown. She kind of took over that towards the end. Tally had a good start. Good start, very good start. Within some speed from Shelby and a couple of the girls kind of took over there. Yeah. And now as we enter our final heat, in our first in our first lane, we got Leah Thompson, a freshman from Timothy, Trinity Central all the way in St. Louis. Trinity Catholic. Trinity Catholic all the way from St. Louis. There My apologies. Go. Don't want to, <laughs> don't want to offend the Catholics. Lane two, uh, Davion Smith, a senior from Trinity Catholic all the way in St. Louis. In lane three, we got Teresa Thompson, a junior from Park Hill. In lane four, Serena Williams, a senior from Battle, who comes in with our fastest time. Followed by number five, Amari Grimes, a senior from Fort Osage. Lane six, Lana Dorsey, a senior from Grandview. So expect the three seniors to really be battling it out in those mm -hmm. strong, powerful lanes. Kirsten Brimmingham, a sophomore from Park Hill. And Talia Pfeiffer, a Piper. junior from Blue Strings. Yeah. <clears throat> and all these ladies run sub-13. And so we should, we should have a pretty good race here. Yeah. Here they go as they're getting into the blocks. Knowing that start is so important. Let's see how it goes for these ladies. Fort Osage. Very strong lead from mm. Fort Osage Great and Battle. Great start. Great start from Amari Grimes. Ooh. Then Serena Williams. <laughs> From battle. She took it, didn't she? It was yeah. hard to see from the angle we got up here, but I believe she did. Yeah. I mean, that was a very close race from Serena Williams and Amari Grimes of Fort Osage. Yeah, that was a great start by Amari Grimes, and, and she uh, she looked really strong. I thought I thought with that kind of start she was going to be able to take it, but Serena showed some great speed down the stretch and had that makeup, what we call makeup speed. It's not really that all athletes – 
get slower as the 100 meter goes on. You, you hit that 50, 60 meter mark, and then every athlete is slowing down. That's just physically what happens. But those athletes who look like they get faster are really just the ones that aren't slowing down as much as the others. Yes. And so a lot of times when people uh, watch a 100 meter dash, they think, oh, somebody increased their speed or somebody you know, out sprinting somebody at the end when really it was just, well, that person just didn't slow down as much as the other person. Right about the... Okay, and we're back down on the track with Island And Island, who you got with us? I have Serena Williams with me from Battle High School. So uh, you just finished your race. So what are you thinking about now that it's over? I'm thinking about my next event. I had triple jump, and I'm excited to carry the energy of winning on to the next event. Are you proud of your performance in this race today? Yeah. Are you excited for your next ones? Yes. <laughs> You'll do a great job. You did awesome in this one. Thank you. Thank you a lot. All right, guys, back to you. All right, we just got our first uh, heat of the boys. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, it looks like our looks like our winner is gonna be Gavin Gillian, the sophomore from Fort Osage. Even though it was just, it was the weakest heat on here, visually it looked like it was gonna be one of the strongest. They all held together really closely. Yeah, and there's there's quite a few heats that we got here. Um, we got five heats of the boys uh, in the event, so um, a lot of runners here, and uh, we've got a few. We got a couple that look like they could break, especially with this tailwind. We've got several in that final heat that look like they could break 11 seconds. Yeah, as we enter into our second heat, we got Michael Jones, a junior from St. Michael's, Devonte Rice, a senior from Liberty North. Darius Perschel, a junior from Lee Summit. Maurice Mossy, a junior from Kirkwood. Aiden Armstead, a sophomore from Liberty North. And Tristan Floyd, a junior from Fort Osage. We'll see how these guys can do at the, with the 100 meter dash. You know, a lot of people think that, okay, 100 meters is not very far, but it, it takes a lot out of these athletes because yeah. they are pushing themselves to maximum capacity. It is as fast as they can go for the entire race. And when you do that, that's that's a lot more strain on your body than people think. And, you know, sometimes they say, well, a 100-meter dash isn't as difficult as the mile or the two-mile. And, yeah, cardiovascular-wise, it's not. But but torque on your body and your muscles and, and pushing those to the max – it still does take a toll on your body. Oh, absolutely. As our second heat start, it looks like we got a very good run from Darius Perschel from Lee Summit. Okay. As we enter our third heat, we got Desmond Wright, a junior from Lincoln College Prep in lane one, Micah Harris, a freshman from Kirkwood in lane two, Andrew Robinson, a sophomore from Lincoln College Prep, Jackson Clay, a junior from Blue Springs, Stefan Black, a junior from Blue Springs, running in the 4-5 lane, so that'll be a close, like, hometown rivalry thing going on. Uh, Darian Newell, a junior from Park Hill. Deandreon Gillum, a junior from Raytown South. And Alfonso Andrews, a senior from Trinity Catholic. Yeah, and I'm excited to see Jackson and, and Steph race here. Uh, I coached both of them in football. They're, they were both defensive backs this past year, and both – both great kids, and so it'll be fun to see them battle each other. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, as the runners get set, let's see who gets the bragging rights between Steph and Jackson. <laughs> and, and off Steph they go, both very strong bit. starts. Yeah. And Robinson Andrew oh. from Lincoln College Prep Jackson. also with a strong start. Oh, Jackson took it home. I'm not gonna lie, that kind of surprised me a little bit. <laughs> And Jackson Clay is going to take our victory in the th third round of the heats. As we enter our fourth heat, we got Jaden Steele, a sophomore from Blue Spring South, Devonte Key, a junior from Raytown, Tynarius Kent, a senior from Battle, Jack Lowry, a senior from Liberty, Clint Purcell, a senior from Rockhurst, Christopher Moore, a freshman from Trinity Catholic. Adrian Morris, a junior from Raytown, and Jalen Newberry, a junior from Staley. As we enter this, it's good to see Christopher Moore running in one of the top heats as a freshman. But as we saw in the in the hurt in the men's hurdles, that that doesn't always equate to success. Yeah, that's difficult. I mean, the hundred meters for a freshman to to even be in the race, much less in in the top two fastest heats, um, that that's impressive. So we'll definitely look for more out of the young man as as his career progresses. Yeah. Off they go, a very strong start from Liberty Battle. And just from a rough angle, it looks like our winner is gonna be Jack Lowry, the senior from Liberty, but a lot of his close competitors on both sides of him and even on the corners appear to be giving him a little issue, little trouble, a little challenge every now and then. Yeah, and you know, that's one of those Runners we were talking about being that fastest guy in the next to fastest heat. Uh, you can definitely sneak in there and snag one of those top eight spots, get some points for your team. Um, you know, sliding into that five and six area even uh, to get some points there. That can definitely, uh, definitely happen. So we'll see if that's the case. And now we enter the, the last heat with Fabian McCloy, a sophomore from Staley. Trey Vaval, a senior from Blue Springs South, who's had some relative success, so expect to hear his name a lot mentioned throughout this as well. Jeffrey Willis, a junior from Grandview. Lori Martin, a senior from Battle, who is so far the only runner to drop below that 11, 11 second mark. Micah Manning, a junior from Lee Summit. Terion Winters, a junior from Liberty. Franklin Devoin, a junior from Grandview. And Jalen Noel, a sophomore from Park Hill. So two sophomores and the one and eight lanes finishing it out. Yeah, and Trey Vival from Blue Springs South, he uh, is a good, good athlete, was a good football player for him, and uh, it will be interesting to see if he, can, if he can pull off a little bit of an upset here because all those guys are pretty close. Good start, oh, it looks a little slip on the start from him. You got a very close battle with our front runner and Lori Martin and Micah Manning. Looks like Manning's gonna take it in that's, a surprising upset. That's gonna be that's gonna be close because uh, 
I'm not sure from our angle who actually took that because because Trey Vival was he was as we talked about before quote unquote closing a little bit. That was a close one. That'll be interesting to see how. Yeah, that that'll one be interesting to see how that turns out. out. Where is she? What's up, Beast Mode? Black. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, dude. I didn't know if they oh, yeah. got me. You don't have your phone. All right, and we're going back down on the track. Island, you have got our 100-meter champion, Micah Manning from Lee Summit. Yes, I do. Um, so you just ran 10.87. Are you happy with the time that you ran today? Uh, yes, I am, because last week I ran 11 flat. I wasn't really satisfied, so I'm glad. Do you have any more events after this that you need to prepare for? Uh, yes, I have the 4x2, the 4x1, the 200. How are you going to prepare for those? I'm going to cool down and just stay focused and just bring some energy. You'll do a great job in your next ones. You did an awesome job in this one. Thank you. Thank you. Back to you guys. All Thank right, you. and we wish congratulations again to Micah and winning that sprint race. Yeah. Right before we start the girls 4 by 200 we'd like to welcome everyone who's just now joining us. We're on the campus of Blue Springs High School for the Gary Parker Invitational. So our first round, our first heat of the girls 4x200 is going to consist of Raytown, Battle, Kirkwood, Lincoln College Prep, Grandview, Liberty North, and Liberty. Yeah. 
Christian Skett. So right before we go into the first heat of the girls 4x200, watch for a close race between our lane 4 and lane 5 teams of Lincoln College Prep and Grandview, both under the 151 time that a lot of their competitors can't seem to get past. Raytown right now, who started in the one spot, having a very strong lead. Now the baton pass, leading him into the their part of the race. Okay. In come Liberty, and it looks to be with Lincoln College Prep. So it looks like Grandview has taken over the lead with Lincoln College Prep closing in and Liberty and Liberty North both holding at relatively respectable distances. Grandview out in front by a reasonable distance, but Lincoln College Prep closing in along with Raytown coming in. Right now, your top five of Grandview, Lincoln College Prep, Liberty North, Liberty, and Raytown. All appear to be holding really close together. Raytown now taking the lead over Grandview. And Raytown in first, Grandview in second, Liberty in third. That was definitely a surprise. Some definite big help from the Raytown's leg or anchor, who definitely just gave him that strong final 200 to not only catch up to the Grandview runner, but to pass them and take the win in the first heat. In our second heat of the girls' 4 by 200 meter while they set it up, we've got Blue Springs in, round, in lane 1, Raytown South in round, lane 2, Staley in lane 3, Park Hill in lane 4, Trinity Catholic in lane 5, Lee Summit West in lane six, Lee Summit in lane seven, and Ruskin making their first appearance in lane eight. In the second heat, expect all of these running teams to be very strong. Watch for strong performances in our lane four, lane five, and lane three. 
especially with Staley and Trinity Catholic only being a couple tenths off from each other. The four by two is always an interesting race because it's not it's not like the four by one where, hey, you mess the handoff and you're pretty much out of it. So it doesn't have that kind of pressure for the handoff, but it's not it's not quite like the four by four where there's a there's just a ton of guts and we're seeing who's gonna have strength down the stretch. So it's that that in between where you've got the fastest speed you can go for as long as you can go. You still got to have a good handoff, but you can recover from a bad handoff in this race. And off the runners go. Russ get in first around the first bend. Trinity Catholic gaining speed as they turn around that corner. And there goes Ty Lee on lane one, passing up, passing up Raytown South. Looks like we've got a fallen runner. Might have had maybe an accidental collision on the track. Trinity Catholic seems to be extending their lead, but here comes... Here comes Staley around the bend, trying to make it at least close. It's going to be interesting. It looks like Staley's going to outbeat Trent Catholic with just a little bit burst of Ooh, speed. There they go. And there you go. It looks like Staley's going to come in first. Trinity Catholic in second. I think and Blue Springs edged some... him out at third. What? Did Blue Springs edge him out at third? And as of a right now, a too close to a too close to call between Blue Springs and Lee Summit West. That was probably one of the most exciting races we've seen all day. Yes, it was. <laughs> We're waiting for that official times to come in because that was close. That was very close. I think we can clearly say that. Staley got first and Trinity Catholic got second, but to see who got that third spot is going to be interesting. Yeah, and that was really strong by the Staley runner. We, we don't have their names here on our sheets, but uh, it was very strong to come back there at the end and and be able to run her down and, and take the lead there at the end. Especially with Trinity Catholic's lead going into that anchor position being as big as it was. Yeah, yeah. Anything can happen in track <laughs> and field.
Going back to the girls, 4x200 in the final heat. Staley got first, Trinity Catholic got second, and then in a photo finish, finish, Blue Springs ended up taking third place over Lee Summit West. Yeah, and those times coming in, it was Blue Springs 148.80, Lee Summit West 148.80. So, I mean, they, they had to extend even beyond... Uh, even beyond tenths and hundreds of seconds to try to figure that one out. So, so that was very close race, very fun to watch. All right, as we get started for our first heat of the boys 4x200, in our third lane we have Warrensburg, fourth lane Lee Summit, fifth lane Fort Osage, and our sixth lane is our Blue Springs. And e that Blue Springs, yeah, Blue Springs is a B squad. They sometimes allow teams to run uh, B squads in some of these if there's open lanes in some of these uh, events and they won't have the opportunity to score points even if they did which would be difficult but even if they did run a fast enough time they wouldn't be eligible for points but it gets these guys experience which is a good thing and the Blue Springs runner is starting off very strong soon to be followed by everyone else around the first first bend And the Lee Summit runner just out of nowhere with a burst of speed was able to close the distance extremely quick. Blue Springs B really showing off some legs here, trying to catch up to Lee Summit. Get our anchor Anchor guy a chance to put this race away. And just a little bit of an update on that girls 4x2. Blue Springs actually got fourth because Raytown from another heat snuck in there and ran a little bit faster time. In that first heat, Lee Summit comes in first. Blue Springs B Squad comes in second. A very strong performance that they put in. Fort Osage comes in third, and Warrensburg finishes off the first heat. As we enter the second seed of the f men's four two by hundred, we got Lincoln College Prep in lane one, Raytown South in lane two, Ruskin in lane three, Liberty in lane four, Park Hill in lane five, Grandview in lane six, Blue Spring South in lane seven, and St. Michael's in lane eight. Yeah, I really think in this second heat here, there's potential for some of these teams to sneak into the top eight because uh, uh, Liberty comes in with a time of 132.14. Park Hill comes in with a time of 132.34. Uh, and Ruskin comes in with a time of 132.38. And you, uh, you run in the 132s, the low 132s, you're going to have an opportunity probably to sneak into that top eight. Because uh, in that third heat, the last heat, uh, some of those times of the little bit slower teams are in the 132s as well. And so you really look for Ruskin, Liberty, and Park Hill. If they have good races here, they might be able to sneak into that top eight, uh, top six, and score some points for their team.
series would start if one of you is meant to come to the booth and you'd like to interview for the live stream? All right, we've heard the whistles. It looks like we're getting ready to start this, this second heat. They're checking through to get the okay from all the exchange zone or the exchange zone over there. I think we got the clear, so we're getting ready to go. Race ships are in any minute now. go there we go <clears throat> looks like Blue Spring South is trying to close the gap early and they do yeah. Patton Raytown <clears throat> yeah it looks like Liberty watch you. Liberty they're making up some ground there yeah. on Park Hill they're the first of the exchange but a little bit of a bobble there on the exchange Let's see how these second legs do. The wind has died down a little bit. I don't expect it to be too much of a factor here. Yeah, right now it looks like we've got a Grandview, Blue Spring, South Park, the Liberty, St. Michael's, and Lincoln College Prep, though, are really holding strong. Yeah, and Le Grandview had a lot smoother handoff than uh, Liberty, and you can see that kind of hurt Liberty there. They've got Ruskin, who's already made up the stagger on him. St. Michael's also had a really extended handoff, putting them in a really bad place. Now this last handoff is a little bit shorter of a handoff. You usually have your anchor, your fastest guys here, and you want to get them the baton early in the exchange zone. As they enter the final corner, it looks like we've got a close oh. one between Grandview, Park Ruskin, and has. Ruskin. Reskin almost ran in the wrong lane there. That was that was Lincoln College. That was Lincoln College. Was Lincoln College oh, sorry. Well, actually, I think that it looked like Reskin in that lane three dipped in a little bit into lane two, coming off that turn, but I don't think it was significant enough to worn a DQ or anything like that, but but they look very strong coming down that Yeah, that stretch. was a very, very exciting stretch between the top three runners of that race. Looks like we have an update for uh, girls team scores after four events. We have Battle with 20 points, Blue Springs with 18, Park Hill and Trinity Catholic both at 15, Raytown with 13, Liberty North at 12, Lee Summit West and Staley at 10 points, and then Warrensburg at 9 and Kirkwood at 8. Those are your top 10 after four events of the girls. So as we answer the final heat of the 4 by 2 you've got Kirkwood in lane 1, Staley in lane 2, Grain Valley in lane 3, Battle in lane 4, and Blue Springs in lane 5 are so far our two top competing teams, so that'll be fun to see. Trinity Catholic in lane 6, Rockhurst in lane 7, and Liberty North in lane 8.
And we see Battle and Blue Springs come in with the top two times. 129.88 for Battle and 129.91 for Blue Springs. And if, and we don't know this, but if they have all of their top runners in those races, then it should be a pretty exciting finish when you got two teams that are within three hundredths of each other. Yeah. Not only did they come in with the two fastest times, but if as this moment, Battle and Blue Springs are also in a battle <laughs> for the top two spots. Oh, there you go. I see what you did there. <laughs> Thank you. Off they go. Strong start by both Blue Springs and Battle. All right, here we come to the first baton pass. Let's see who gets that off first. Looks pretty clean. Blue Springs doesn't look too bad there. No. Here comes Battle. Looks like they're running around along with... Looks like Liberty North and Trinity Catholic are leading this by a favorable distance with Blue Springs closing in behind. Yeah, who got Grain the first Valley exchange. Grain Valley and then Battle is not yeah, it looks falling like far behind. Grain Valley had the first exchange. Oh, and we had a really bad exchange really bad out exchange there by Liberty, Liberty North. North. That definitely hurt. Looks like Blue Springs, Grain Valley, Trinity Catholic, and Battle are right now in the position for the top three. See who gets this clean handoff here. Blue Springs handoff looked pretty good. So did Battles. So did Grain Valley. Yeah, so and they got inside lane there. So he's got shorter distance to run. We'll see if he Looks can like hold on. Looks like it's going to be close. There you go. We got Alex. Trinity Hughes on Catholic the there. with a really strong anchor. Oh, looks like Battle. Looks like Battle take first, Trinity Catholic second, Grain Valley third. Yeah, they all finished really strong. Yeah. Looked like the Blue Springs runner kind of tensed up there at the end. You could see just that strain and didn't they relax and fluid and you see that that's when the other teams were able to were able to catch up. Great race. Yeah. Okay, looks like we're going to try to get, uh, Eisen's going to try to get a battle team that just won that 4 by 2 uh, in impressive fashion. Yeah. So before we get back to that, we're going to go to the girls' 1,600 meter run. In our first heat, we got Paige Fallis, a junior from Blue Springs South. Sarah Hickenbotham, a sophomore from Kirkwood. Gracie Coppola, a senior from Liberty North. Haley Roberts, a senior from Staley. Story Downing, a sophomore from Lincoln College Prep. Brooklyn Serwell, a senior from Fort Osage. Brooke Yeats, a freshman from Liberty. Abigail Fett, a junior from Park Hill. Eva Petrini, a sophomore from St. Michael. Emma Totlow, a freshman from Battle, and Hope Admonson, a senior from Battle. Slower. Do you 
could mention that time and say it was that was really good, especially in this kind of win. And off they start with the girls' sixteen hundred meter dash. Okay, and we've got our trackside reporter, Island, back, and you have got the winners of the 4x2, the Battle High School boys. Yes, I'm here with the Battle High School, and uh, I'm going to have them introduce themselves. Hello, my name is Aaron Baisden. My name is Denarius Kent. My name is LaRue Martin. My name is Chris Perley, sir. You guys just ran an impressive 130-33, especially in this win. How do you guys feel after this race? I feel... I feel good and tired at the same time. I feel like we could have done better, but, you know, we can always go back and practice. And as a team, how do you guys motivate each other to push and go as hard as you guys can? Uh, we have good uh, competitions in practice. We have a good rivalry with each other to do better. So. Great answer, great answer. I'll give it back to you guys up in the box. All right, thank you once again. Congratulations to Battle High School boys um, with an impressive 4x2. Very impressive. Starting not the strongest, but then being able to finish it out in the way they did was just, it was really incredible to watch. Yeah. So now it looks like we're in on the first heat of that girls' 1600. For those of you just joining us today, we welcome you to the campus of Blue Springs High School at the Gary Parker Invitational, where, if you just missed it, the battle, the boys battle 4 by 200 meter just won in an amazing comeback fashion. Right now we got the girls 1600 meter run with Kirkwood, with Kirkwood's Sarah Hickenbottom in first. Page falls for Blue Spring South in second with a very close battle with uh, with Brooke Yeet from Liberty. For those of you who are also joining us just now, due to some limited technology and the throwing events being fielded in different areas, we are not able to get fielding events, but we'll try our best to keep you guys updated as we get results. All right, now we're we're gonna take a little uh, look here at. Oh, and we just missed it, but Kobe Mansfield was attempting 13 feet, uh, and his best jump in the vault here was was 12. So he was definitely he was going for a record there. He just barely missed it. And we'll see. 
We're not sure exactly who's still in. I know Battle is very, very strong in the pole vault, and they've got an athlete who is up now. Uh, three of their athletes have gone over 14 feet, which is very, very impressive. Now, only two of them can score, uh, but they entered three in this event because uh, sometimes, uh, well, how districts work is you get two entries in districts. But if you have three people that meet the district standard, which is set every year off of some averages from the state meet, if they can meet the district standard, then you could actually get three entries in districts with a chance for three athletes to go to the state meet. And so that's why you see, you know, some of these teams with multiple athletes in one event because maybe they're trying to go for the district standard, which I would guess Battle High School with three jumpers that are over 14 feet. They want to get the best marks possible to have a chance at, at maybe getting three guys through to state down the road. And this is not the first event that Battle is trying this. They've also got three girls in the pole vault. Is it just two? No, they got three. They've got three girls in the pole vault, two of them being sisters, so they'll be fun to watch going over 10, 10 feet. Yeah, that's, I mean, they must have pretty good vault coach yeah e each each of them have the boys and the girls have three people in this meet that are in the top five in in their respective event so that's great for we'll those see right now it looks like they raised it to 13 six and uh so we'll see if this battle athlete again we're not sure exactly which athlete that is from battle but uh, making an attempt at 13-6 as they raise this thing up, uh, we'll, we'll check back in and see if he can clear that. And the results of the first heat of the girls, four by 1600 meter ended with Kurt coming in first, Liberty coming in second, and Blue Spring South coming in third. Kirk with Sarah Hickenbottom coming in first, Liberty's Brooke Yeats coming in second, and Blue Spring South Paige Fallis coming in third. Yeah, and in this next heat, we've got Madeline Hill from Liberty. She is one to watch out for. She has got the fastest entry time by almost 20 seconds. And so that's very impressive. She's uh, around the 5.09 was her entry time, so she's hovering around that five-minute mark, which is very, very impressive. Um, it's very, very impressive time. We'll see if Michaela Clark from Lee Summit, who's a freshman, we'll see if if she can push her a little bit. She has the next fastest time, but again, that's that's almost 20 seconds. Yeah, behind. And then also a shout out to the blue two Blue Springs runners, Reese Howard and Priscilla Romo. See what they can do for the Wildcats today. So he's that challenge in that first part of the race to to not go out too fast, but not go out too slow. It's yeah. it's tough, and it's you know it's interesting to see, you know, in a race who's going to set the pace, and who's going to relax and settle in to their race and run their race. Um, I think there's no question that Madeline Hill from Liberty is going to set her own pace, <laughs> and everybody else will be. I'm sure their coaches said you don't need to go after her, like. That that will not be good for you down the stretch. So you can see she's already yeah right now quite a bit ahead. Looks like it's going to be a race for second place. Yeah. either Kirkwood or Park Hill, I can't tell. I think it's Park Hill. Okay, we've got an update for you for the on the side. After four events scored, we have Battle 
in first place with 19. Liberty with 17. Grandview coming in third at 16, tied with Trinity Catholic. Lee Summit is rounding out the top five with 14 points. And we've got Staley and Rockhurst both tied with 10. And then Blue Springs with 9. Blue Springs South with 8. And Park Hill with 7.5. So you can see that... Uh, you know we've got a we've got a heated race here after four events, um, Battle and Liberty for those top two spots. But Grandview and Trinity Catholic have had a really strong showing so far, um, rounding out that top four. Okay, we can see with that second pack of runners because we know that Madeline Hill has has got this thing comfortably <laughs> in her pocket. So we've got we've got a pretty good pretty good race going on for second place. There's a, a group of three right there that are looking to looking to get that second spot. And Reese Howard from Blue Springs really starting to pull through. Looking, trying to get that fifth or sixth place. Yeah, and we've got, looks like we've got Mary Ralston from Kirkwood, uh, who's pretty strong there. Kayla Persinger from Lee Summit West, and then from Blue Springs South, uh, Lauren Lowe, trying to hang in there. Uh, those other girls had posted a times that she's running with. Those other girls had posted times that for about 15 seconds. Yeah. Uh, beyond PR, so we'll see how long she can hang with that second pack. And then following behind them, we've got Brooklyn Nybum from Park Hill and Reese Howard from Blue Springs. Yeah, it looks like in that second group that uh, Mary Ralston is really kind of imposing her will a little bit in that second group. She's opening up a lead there. I would think that Kaylin, Kaylin Persinger from Lee Summit West would have a little bit of a kick here. Oh, but here comes. Here comes Lauren Lowe from Blue Spring South. Looks like she might try and make a move. Lauren Lowe, as they approach the finish line. No. Oh. Oh. And it looks like it's going to go to Kaylin Pessinger of Lee Summit West. And I would say that Lauren Lowe from South ran really good, really good race there. Yeah, she really put it on towards the end there. And that was impressive, impressive by Madeline Hill um, from Liberty. You could tell she was in control of the race the whole time. I mean, after the first 100 meters of a 600, <laughs> you knew that she was, this was her race. Yeah. Up next, we got the first heat of the boys' 1600 with 18 runners, which is a surprising amount. 
Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of runners in that first heat. Uh, several, you know, there are some teams that have multiple multiple people running in this that might not be eligible to score points. Um, you know, but just getting that experience and and actually the fastest in this particular heat is Kevin McLean from Blue Springs, a sophomore, uh, with a entry time of 4.49.80. And we wish him the best of luck. He's in my communication class. Ah. So maybe I'll make him give a speech on his race <laughs> on Monday. Uh, it's Water Hill, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's correct. Hey. from Battle, Smith from Port of Spade, Lowe yeah, from Blue Spring, Johnson from St. Michael, Rickner from Okay, Wittenberg, we're going back down to the Morton track, and Iceland has got Madeline Hill, the winner of the Girls 1500 from Liberty, in a, a convincing performance there at win. Uh, thanks, guys. This is Madeline. Um, you just finished the girls 1600, and this is a very long race. How do you keep yourself motivated to keep on going? Um, I knew it was going to be kind of windy um, today, so I just wanted to come out here and just kind of test my fitness and um, just try to hold a heavy, hold a pretty steady pace throughout the uh, race. Uh, and because it was so windy and a little bit chilly, how did you prepare yourself for such a long event? Um, I just try to keep on, you know, my, get it, get myself like a good warm up in, and just like make sure I was really warm and stretch out, and um, yeah, pretty much it. Yeah. Thank you very yeah. much. Back to you guys. All right, thank you, Aislin. Very con convincing win there. She should oh. feel good about that. Yeah, absolutely. In this first heat, looks like we got a pretty good pack there in the front. Yeah, a pretty good pack led by two kids from Liberty North. With Kevin McLean running second. Looks like he's about to make a move. Yeah, he's looking pretty strong. Now Kevin McLean takes first for the freshman from Green Valley. Uh, Mason McCain, wow, those are some fairly close names. Kevin McLean and Mason McCain. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be a fun one. <laughs> And as these guys run, there's a lot of anticipation for the final heat of the 1600. Um, you've got Gabe McLean from Blue Springs High School who's gone sub 420, which is a very good time. Uh, and he's got some foot speed because he is not running the 800 today, but he ran the fastest 800 in Missouri history during the month of March. So of all the athletes who have competed in the month of March, he has the fastest 800 ever recorded. He ran a 155. And because of his training schedule, he's not set to run the 800 here today, but he's running the 1600. So that's somebody that even though he's got the fastest time, if he's, if he's got, uh, if somebody might be just a little bit ahead of him coming down the stretch, he's got the foot speed to, to be able to make that up. And he's gonna be going against Christian Baker uh, from Kirkwood, 
who has an entry time of 421, so not far off of Gabe. And Christian Baker was the 3,200-meter champion last year. We've also got Colton Palmer from Warrensburg coming in with a 426. So there's some studs pecked into this 1600, the final uh, that's going to be coming up here after this race completes. Yeah, and as we narrow down to the last part of the boys 1600 meter, it looks like Dave McLean is going to take this one pretty handily. Yeah. The second place battle between Liberty Norths. I think I think it's battle. Was that was that battle in Fort Osage? Yeah. I think it was Yeah. It looks like Micah Stevens came in second there in that heat and then from a battle and then Michael Reddick from Fort Osage. All right, as we enter into the second heat of our 1,600-meter run for the boys' event, as Marble talked about earlier, we're looking forward to see Gabe McLean, Christian Baker, and Colton Palmer all try and push themselves to, for lack of better words, the limit, to see if they can edge out each other for that first-place spot. Yeah, this should be an exciting race. It's one of really the, uh, as far as just, talent in the races go there's three incredibly talented runners um, in Gay McLean Christian Baker and Colton Palmer as we said before and really you know Staley has Luke Winkler and who runs a 428 and Grain Valley has Royce Fisher who runs a 429 so really that is a very strong top five that you've got all running under 430 and really, that's that's the pack that I, I feel like those guys are going to separate themselves fairly early from the rest of the group. Yeah, and a quick shout to Blue Springs home hometown kid Brock Woodson being the youngest kid in this heat as a sophomore while everyone else is a junior and senior. All right, here we go. Let's see how Gabe takes this takes this out. Looking pretty strong, looking pretty smooth. We'll see they'll be able the runners will be able to cut in from that outside. You want a gradual cut in there. Looks like he's able to maintain and get that inside lane which is which is key in a race like this. Now he's going to force people that want, he's going to be in control and be able to force people that want to pass him to have to do that outside of him on a turn or wait till later in the race when they get on straightaway. So very good job by Gabe there. Yeah. And he's followed closely by Christian Baker from Kirkwood. Yeah, that whole curb, he really kept those guys on his outside. He's a smart runner. Looks like Royce Fisher trying to hang in there. Gabe maintained that inside, which is which is key. And you'll see, even though Royce is, is right there on his outside, he is running a little bit farther than Gabe every single turn. And that could come up big in a close race. Looks like Christian Baker is content to just kind of stay in that lane and, and hang back just a little bit instead of instead of uh, trying to make an outside move. Yeah.
All right, and as they come like down this home stretch. Gabe still, oh, a little stumble there. Somebody hit it back of his foot. It, it, I don't know if you saw that or not, but it looked like uh, Royce Fisher just clipped a little bit of Gabe's foot, but he didn't go down, thank goodness. It could have also been Colton Palmer from Warrensburg who started to make a little bit of a push, but just couldn't finish it out. Gabe just doing a great job of keeping that that inside lane there. You'll see now that now is the point where looks like we're those seeing top guys start to separate just a little bit. Looks like Brock Woodson is trying to insert himself into the top of the heat, top of the pack. One of those guys, if they want to challenge Gabe, they're going to have to try to make a move soon because he's got that speed to be able to close it out. Looks, Looks like, like Royce has maybe struggled a little bit. Did you see that? You can see Gabe looks like he's picking it up a little bit, as is Christian from Kirkwood. Let's see this last 300. Looks like Gabe's going to hold him off. Before. He's trying to make a move before this turn to get in front of him, and, and he, he does. Goes. And now he seems to be gaining speed. That was a nice move by Chris Baker to get that. And 3,200-meter runner who's got some left in the tank. Wow. He turned that thing on at about the 280 mark and then dominated. Yeah. And I had that last 300 that he ran was under 40 seconds. That is impressive by Christian Baker. What a great race. Gabe ran well. It's just Christian Baker. You saw he had a lot more in the tank. And, I mean, a 3,200-meter champion, you would think that running a 1,600, then he's going to have a lot there yeah. at the end. I thought maybe Gabe's just pure, spot, pure foot speed would uh, would overtake there, but, but Christian's ability to close out was impressive. After running a 1600 and or a 1300 basically, and then be able to run a sub 4300, that was very very impressive to me. And it could Christian be possible Baker. that Gabe's maybe trying to pull a reverse and beat Christian in the boys 1300 meter run. The 3200, mm -hmm. yeah, the 3200. We'll see those guys battle again, and that will be exciting. Now that's Christian's race, so. Well, that'll be one to watch. Yeah. Christian will definitely have the advantage there, but that, that was an exciting race. Okay, I'm going to listen to some of his answers, and I might have you, uh, I might ask uh, a question as well to him, okay? Yeah. Yeah, you're with the wind, I guess? Yeah. Okay. Okay, we're good whenever you guys are. Okay, and now we go to our trackside reporter, Isaac Lumberg. And Isaac, you have the 1,600-meter champion 
uh, Christian Baker from Kirkwood. Yes, I do. Um, he just finished the boys' 1600. So, um, are you happy with your performance today on the track? Yeah, definitely. It was a good race. It was a lot of fun. Uh, some good competition. So, uh, it was good. And this was a very, very large meet. Uh, what were you feeling before and during the meet about competing against so many people? Yeah, well, I think it's fun because uh, we've been to a lot of big meets in the past two weeks. So I just went out to California and then four-hour drive here and the next week's Kansas. So it's just been a lot of fun uh, getting to come out to these meets and race and uh, see the competition and in the rest of the state, curious, uh, uh, areas like that. So To find out from him, what was it like? Uh, competing against Gabe McLean. What was it like competing against have had um, several people battles. known who've had several, you know, um, battles and stuff? Yeah, I mean, it was a lot of fun. It's the same guys I'll be seeing at the state meet. So um, it, was, it was fun getting to be with them, kind of joke with them on the line, and then be able to uh, get it serious and race. So You did great. So What can we expect out of the 3,200 from him? What can we expect out of the 3,200 from him? Hopefully the same as that. Uh, I'll be tired, but hopefully I can uh, find something and go with the top guys and hopefully uh, have another good kick. And Yeah, we'll see. Okay, thank you so, so much. Yeah, no problem. Back to you guys. That was Christian Baker from Kirkwood uh, who had an impressive finish to that 1600. I know that, uh, I know that was a... A tough race against Gabe McLean, who's a, who's a very good uh, runner as well. And so he, uh, we're trying to get his times here to see where he officially finished, what his official time was. Um, let's see, boy, 1,600-meter run. Sorry, I was just trying to find that official time, and it was a 426, which... Again, in this wind, even though he had a faster seed time than that, a 426 with these kind of conditions, it's a little bit cooler, a little bit more windy. Uh, that was definitely, uh, definitely impressive. As we finish up the first heat of the girls, four by one. <laughs> So up next we have the second heat of the girls 4x100 with Raytown South in lane 1, Park Hill in lane 2, Blue Springs in lane 3, Lee Summit West in lane 4, who's the only team to come in a below 50 second time frame, Battle in lane 5, Trinity Catholic in lane 6, Ruskin in lane 7, and Grandview in lane 8. And it seems like this is a pretty balanced field. Um, you know, this is the 4x1 is one of those races that it could be anybody race, even if you got the fast seed time, it just takes one mess up on the handoff uh, for things not to go well. It looks like over at Pole Vault, uh, we've raised it up to 14 feet. And so we'll see an attempt here. Oh, clipped it on the way up. That can't be easy in these kind of conditions as we, we keep mentioning the wind, but that plays a huge factor. Uh, sometimes guys are not used to that big a wind at your back, and so it pushes you a little bit closer to the bar. Uh, and so some people just automatically think, oh, you've got a, you got a wind at your back. That should help you. You should be able to run faster. But that's not always the case because, it, it, yes, it might push you faster. You might be able to gain a little bit more speed, but all of a sudden you get up in the air and it pushes you closer to the bar yeah. than you're used to. I'm willing to bet that was Brendan Safely. Um, or Safely, I'm not sure how that's pronounced, but I bet you from Rockhurst because he came in with a height of 1404, and now it looks like we've got we've got one of those battle guys. It looks like he's going to be making an attempt. I don't know if we'll catch this before the start of the 4 by one I think we'll go back to that, catch that, the start of the 4 by one and see which girls team is going to take this. Let's see how these exchanges go. Yeah, we got some pretty good starts here.
Good exchange. It looks like looks like most teams had a pretty good exchange yeah. there. Let's see who gets there first. Looks like Liberty North. Oh, a little bit of a little bit of a bobble there. And as they enter the final turn here. Clean handoff. Here we go, battle. Looking strong. Battle, Trinity Catholic, Lee Summit West, Park Hill. Very strong from battle. Yeah, they had some good exchanges all the way around. Uh, and definitely, definitely came away with... Uh, a five meter win there, yeah. which in the in the four by one is that, that's pretty big. Looks like we're about to begin the boys four by 100 meter where we got St. Michael in lane three, Raytown South in rain f lane four, Ruskin in lane five, and Blue Springs B in lane six. That's the um All right, now we're down uh, on the field with Island, who is there with not only the Battle Girls 4x1, but Serena Williams, who also did some good stuff in the triple jump, right? Yes, of course. Um, once again, we have Serena on camera. Um, not only just her, but also her Battle uh, Girls teammates. Um, a while ago, Serena won triple jump with a jump of 38 feet and 4 inches. Um, what do you feel about such an impressive jump? Um... Uh, I'm really excited that I could jump a jump like that so early in the season and just more excited to be able to jump further later in the season towards state and sectionals and districts. And then as well as the triple jump, you also and your teammates just won the girls 4 by one relay. Um, what sort of feelings are all of you girls feeling and experiencing right now? Tired and excited. <laughs> yeah, tired and excited. <laughs> um, are we going to see any of you girls in anyth anything else? 
Yeah, I have long jump and high jump left today. I have 300 hurdles, 200. And this is my last race. Is that it? And I had the 200 left. All right, you girls did amazing. We're all very, very excited to see you guys run. And uh, you, this, is, this has been a great meet. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> yes, here, real quick. Uh, okay, real quick. Get to ask Serena. We want to know up here is, is Serena going to get tired of all those medals that she's going to be taking home? Uh, we want to know, Serena, if you're going to get tired of all those medals you're taking home. Uh, you don't get tired of them. You learn to have a story with each one, and you, you learn to use your wins and medals to take points home for your team and to just share it with your teammates. That's a great answer. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you, Aislinn. And that, what, a, what a great answer there that Serena had. Um, yeah. You know, just talking about how each medal has a story. So she's obviously a very successful athlete in multiple events. Still has some events to go. Uh, and, you know, we, we make a joke about her getting tired of the medals around her neck. And she says she doesn't get tired of it but because there's a story behind each yeah. one. So that I think that's really cool. Yeah, it also shows great maturity in an athlete if they're able to take their wins as humbly as she did. Mm -hmm. So she's mm -hmm. not only a very good athlete but a very humble athlete who understands the amount of – time and effort that all her competitors have put in. Yeah, that's great. All right, we got the second heat of the boys coming up here. Yeah, in lane two, we got Grandview. Lane three, we got Kirkwood. Lane four, Park Hill. Lane five, Liberty North. Lane six, Warrensburg. And lane seven, we got Lincoln College Prep. Yeah, I've got it on now. So I just stand here. You'll just go to me. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Eisen, we got a camera on you, and we finally got you some food down there. You've been working really hard down there. Um. Yes, I have. Um, I'm very, very happy to get some pizza right now. <laughs> I had. What do you got down there? What is it? Pepperoni? Is it? Yep, hamburger? some pepperoni and some cheese. I definitely haven't been working as hard as these competitors out here, though. I think they deserve some pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, we appreciate all you're doing down there, and, and we'll come back to you here in a little bit. You okay. Enjoy that pizza. I will. Thank you. <laughs> she's been doing a great job for us. Oh, yeah, she's been doing fantastic. She deserves that pizza. <laughs> We've been sneaking a, a little bit up here, too. There's not cameras on us, so we can do it kind of whenever we want. Uh, I've been sneaking more more Water. drinks than yeah. anything. you got to stay hydrated. you got to stay Just hydrated. Like the athletes, you got to stay hydrated up here. I've switched to coffee so I can keep my energy up. I'm a lot older than you. I don't know. My body would say differently. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Looks like we got the four by one. Second heat underway. They are just zooming. That's that's what they're doing for one. Oh no! Looks like with an athlete who might have might have tweaked a hamstring there. That's unfortunate. Is that from Kirkwood? I think it might have been a Kirkwood team. Uh, actually, I think it was the Park Hill. Team. Was it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because Kirkwood's yep. coming. And as we come down the stretch. Very good push by the Kirkwood. Wow. I cannot tell. I can't either. All I know is that that Kirkwood runner, I would like to have him on the football team. <laughs> <laughs> that guy was big and he was fast. Hey, do you mind uh, going across the state? <laughs> yeah, we can't do that. That's illegal recruiting. I would not I would never suggest that. I'm just saying <laughs> from a coach's standpoint, that's the kind of athlete you want, somebody who has that speed and that strength. And that size. Yeah. Great linebacker DN there. 
Yeah, so I think we're going to have to wait till the final final results come before we can say anything about that heat. Yeah. And if that's any indication for the final one coming up, then we're in for a very exciting race. Yeah. Looks like battle if, I mean, if everything shakes out the way it should, which, again, four by ones, you never know. But if battle runs a clean race here, uh, then they have about half a second entry time faster than than uh, than any of the other competitors. Yeah, and going along with that, the third heat consists of Liberty in lane one, Blue Springs South in lane two, Trinity Calf in lane three, Battle in lane four, Stanley in lane five, Blue Springs in lane six, Lee Summit in lane seven, and Rockers in lane eight. And I don't know about you, but I'm more than surprised with the way Battle has showed out at this competition here today. Yeah, and they've had, uh, their athletic program just continues to get better. I mean, they've gotten better in football. They compete at a high level there. Uh, so they've got, you know, they, they pull a lot, of, uh, a lot of good athletes in that Columbia area and, you know, and, and they provide every commentator in the history of commentators easy <laughs> things to say about yeah. them being in battles and them. You know, Ted, what a good name for a school, huh? Yeah, and just they're really showing out here today with leading both in the girls and the points, girls and the boys groups and points. Yeah. They've done a great job. We'll see how this 400-meter 400 400 meter relay, uh, otherwise known as a 4x1, how this goes. The name of the game is clean handoffs. And no tweaked hamstrings. Yeah, yeah. I hope that athlete's okay. Yeah. You never like to see that. Good starts. You can see Battle making up some ground there already. Let's see if this handoff is clean. Looked clean handoff by Battle. Blue Springs really starting to push out there as well. Yeah, Staley and Battle. Battle, another clean handoff. They get one more clean handoff, and they'll run away with this thing. <coughs> Blue Springs made a big push oh, along looks with Looks like Staley. might have started a little bit early. Still, it's too much. Too much of a lead. It's impressive. Oh, Blue Springs hang on for third. And, and they, they do. Did, they did, they did. What a great anchor from Patso. Yeah. Battle's lead was just too strong for Trinity Catholic to make any sort of push, but it was still really strong from Trinity Catholic. That's a couple of events in a row now that Battle has really shown just how dominant they seem to have come out this year. It was a great race by Battle. I thought maybe they had taken off. Their, their runner did take off a little bit early, but then he slowed down his acceleration, uh, and his teammate there was able to catch up to him. I thought maybe they'd be in trouble for a second, but they were just too far in the lead because they had such smooth handoffs going into that last last exchange. I mean, you've got to give props to the Trinity Catholic team. I mean, they yeah. really they really closed that gap, especially with the lead that Battle was leaving. And it looks like Battle, battle ran a 42.8. Um, looks like that is it, with the official time. So ran a 42.82, which is really close to their uh, their seed time of 42.61. And especially in this in this uh, wind, as we, as we keep talking about coming down this home stretch, had they gotten a clean hand up here, they probably would have PR'd for the season. Um, but they still they still easily got the win there. Yeah.
It looked like there was there could have been a little trouble in that last exchange. How did you guys pull through and still be able to dominate the race? Maybe a little maybe a little bit of trouble in that last exchange. Talk us through what happened and how you overcame that to dominate the race. them kind of face the stadium here. Okay. Okay. All right, and we are down on the field again with Island, and you've got the boys 100 meter champions from Battle High School. Yeah, they just won four by one for the boys, and you all just finished in first. How do you guys keep each other going and push through how, you know, how you guys keep each other motivated? Um, for me, I know I got a chip on my shoulder from last, uh, last state meet, so I know we really want to make a deep state run. That's how we push each other. And there looks like there was a little bit of trouble in the last handoff, so talk us through how you worked through that and how you kept going. Really, we got chemistry. We know each other. We're, we've had new steps. We're figuring things out, but we're going to get together. Yeah, you guys pushed through, and you came in first. So, I mean, <laughs> you know, it all works out. So, Battle is doing great this uh, meet, and you guys have done great, too. I've seen a lot of you guys. So, are we going to do any, any other events? Um, I got the Open 200. I did long jump already. I'm done. I have the Open 200. You see me in a triple jump? All right, well, you guys will do great. Good luck in all of your other events. Thank you very much. Back to you guys. All right, thanks, Eisen. Congratulations to Battle High School boys for their first place finish in the 4x1. And now it looks like we are ready for the second heat of the girls' 400. Is that right? Yeah, and uh, our first and second lanes are both held by a freshman and a sophomore from Battle High School who seem to be doing really well at these at this tournament. Uh, our lane three, we got McKenna Williams from Staley. Lane four is Jillian Gross from Kirkwood. Lane five is Cheyenne Smith from Park Hill. Lane six is Elena Gatzmeyer from Liberty North. And Marinthi Meyer is in lane seven, a freshman from Kirkwood. While we're on the topic of Battle High School, I thought we'd head over to the pole vault area where they just had a competitor clear 14-6. So did St. Michael. So it looks like we're going to have a little bit of a battle over there in the pole vault area. Looks like Battle's got another runner going on here in their pole vault. That is two athletes that Battle has been able to get over 14-6 in the pole vault. So watch for a close matchup between the two, two Battle kids remaining and the St. Michaels. Should be interesting over there on pole vault. We'll keep you updated as we see what happens. Closing out the second heat of our girls 14 of our girls 400 meter 
run. We had first place was Elena Gatzmeyer from Liberty North. Second place was Jillian Gross from Kirkwood. And third place was McKenna Williams from Staley. As we enter our third heat of the girls 400 meter, in lane one we have Grace Smith, a sophomore from Blue Springs, Michaela Carson, a freshman from Raytown, Brooke Ware, a sophomore from Liberty North, Kyra Burrow, Burton, a freshman from Lee Summit, Abby Wallace, a junior from Lee Summit, Arden Isbell, a sophomore from Trinity Catholic, Torrance Diamond, a junior from Grandview, and Alex Hutchins, a senior from Trinity Catholic. And off they go. And there's a little bit of a change. Grace Smith Blue Springs is not running in this event. As the race ends, Kyra Burton wins the summit. We now head over to Matt Marble for the triple jump scores. All right, and we got the triple jump results in. You already heard from Serena Williams that we interviewed that one with a jump of 38.08, and there was a little change on that, but uh, our graphics won't allow us to put all that up there, so we're gonna we're gonna round it. So we got a 38.08 from Serena, um, Talia Emerson with a 38.04. Okay, and you can see we've got some other good jumps there, 37, 35, 34. Um, Jalen Bedell is uh, rounding out the top eight with a 34.03. Looks like that was a tie for seventh. So there are your uh, winners of the girls' triple jump. As we... As we enter the final heat of the girls' 4x4, four four, or the girls' 400-meter dash, my bad, we got number one, Catherine Minette, a sophomore from Liberty, Brianna Garth, a senior from Raytown South, Messon Husley, a junior from Lee Summit West, and Mari Grimes, a senior from Fort Osage, who had a very good earlier in the, in the, in the tur meet. And number five, Celia Johnson, a sophomore from Park Hill. And number six, Chloe Sainez, a sophomore from Staley. And number seven, Shelby Brimingham, a junior from Lee Summit West. And number eight, Tasia Saxton, a senior from Liberty. And we've got three athletes in this um, from in those he, in, sorry, in those lanes, three, four, five, and six. They're all under 60. And so those are excellent times and, and we should see a good battle. So keep your eye on lanes three, four, five, uh, and six. Off they go. It looks like we had a couple scratches from here because we don't have a full, full heat here. Kalia Johnson is looking pretty strong there for Park Hill. Yes.
Here they come. Let's see who gets to close this out. And as they come around the bend, it looks like we've got our top three of. And that was my. That's a, that was a Amari Grimes from Fort Osage, who also had a very strong run earlier on the meet. Yeah. Now striding out there. Let's see who keeps her arms pumping. Oh, she locked up a little bit. Ooh. I think Madison Hustley, the junior from Lee Summit, was, takes that one. Yeah, she did with, just at the end. With Amari Grimes coming in second from Fort Osage and Chloe Sanez, a so the sophomore from Staley. And that was a close race. Yeah. I mean, you could see, I thought um, Amari looked really strong. And then you could see about the last, really just 20 meters or so, she kind of tensed up a little bit. You saw her shoulders raise a little bit. And that's when uh, Madison Holsey was able to make her move and, and be able to steer the race. Sometimes even just the thought of someone being behind you can make it enough to where you freeze up and pause in a moment where you normally wouldn't. Yeah, and of course any athlete always like to be in the lead, uh, but then you're, you're chasing the finish line and you're going not to get caught. And when the runner behind you has a visual on you who knows what kind of ground they're making up, uh, a lot of times as you see that last 20 meters of the race is where an athlete can sneak by another one because they're the ones that get to see what it is they're chasing. And that was an excellent time in this win, both both Madison and um, from Lee Summit West and Amari from Fort Osage. Both of them broke 60 seconds. So, um, again, I hate to I hate to keep referencing the win, but it is a big factor, and, and these athletes are battling through that. It seems to have died down a little bit, but, I mean, it's still going to be a factor. <laughs> All right, now Aislinn is standing by with Madeline Holsey from Lee Summit West, the champion in the girls' 400. Yes, this is Madison here with me, and uh, she just finished first in the 400-meter dash. So how have you kept warm and stretched uh, waiting for this event? I mean, it's definitely a little bit chillier than we're used to in April, a little bit windy, but just stayed in my sweats for a really long time and tried to keep moving until I got on the line. And the 400 dash is one of the toughest events. You have to be very quick. Um, how do you get in and stay in the mindset, in the right mindset for this race? I think the 400 is all about getting out fast and then just trying to hold on for the end and uh, staying strong throughout the middle and the end. So, and for the last 50 meter meters, how were you over to like? How were you able to, you know, push through and really get towards the end to, to beat that one girl? I knew it was going to be a really close race, and I just had to give all that I had to see if I could get the win. You did great. You did great. Thank you so much. Back to you guys. All right. Thank you. And congratulations to uh, Matt and Halsey uh, from Lee Summit West on that win in the 400-meter dash. Now we got the second heat or the third heat? Are second heat of the base 400 meter dash. The boys 400 meter dash.
Very strong running from Kirkwood as they come down the pass. Rogers just looks like they can't keep up. First place is going to go to Samuel Walter, the senior from Kirkwood. Second place is going to go Marcus Thomas, the freshman from Park Hill. And your third place is going to be Thomas Chaston from Rockhurst. Now we're going to head over to Marble for the girls' shot put. All right, and we've got some results for you from the girls' shot put. We've got Maddie Harris from Lee Summit West with a really nice throw of 44 feet 7 inches. Uh, that's a really strong throw. And then uh, LaShonda Tapp uh, from Park Hill with a nice throw of 40, uh, 04. And then Paris Williams rounding out the top three from Battle at 40 feet 4 inches. Blue Springs athlete Kobe Tyler broke into the top eight with a throw of 36 feet four inches there's your girls place finishers uh, shot put all right coming up in this third heat uh, looks like the fastest time we got from Kendall Schrader from Grain Valley with a 5360 so we'll see if he can uh, if he can win this heat as he's seated to do that Oh, looks like we got a false start in that third heat. That's unfortunate. That's very unfortunate. I wonder who it was. We'll see who the official, uh, which lane is the official going into. I can't quite see from here. Looks like, was that lane five? Or lane five six? Uh, I can't see who they... Are they still? Well, nobody looks to be DQ'd, so I don't know if it was a maybe a block slipped um, by an athlete. Sometimes they'll restart eight if there's a egregious block slip. So as we go over to pole vault, St. Michael's is trying to count 15-6. 15-6. Oh, oh just under it. Very, very strong effort, though. Yeah, those guys are they're getting up there. 15 is, 15 is getting up there. Now they're 15-6. Let's see how this 400 shakes out here. Coming down the stretch, it looks like the St. Michael runner. Nice. Giving them a little boost. Christopher Christopher Pouncil. There you go. Strong finish. With Chris the headband. Christopher Pouncil, the senior from St. Michael, taking win. Of the third heat. Of the third heat. Of the third heat. <laughs> we still got two more heats to go. A lot of fast guys still ready to go. As we enter the fourth heat of the of the boys 400 meter dash, we have Dennis Hill, a senior from Grandview, Evan Sambroski, a junior from Park Hill, a senior from Battle, Kylan Lewis in lane three, Sean Buckles in four, a senior from Grandview, Dylan Drew, a senior from Liberty North, Alex Hughes, a junior from Blue Spring, 
Brennan O'Neill, a junior from Liberty North, and Benjamin Preston, the senior from Fort Osage. Let's see. I'm I'm rooting for Alex Hughes. He's got a he's got a little bit to make up here. He's one of the athletes I coached in football. He's got a big long stride. Hopefully, he doesn't tense up here. But it looks like uh, Kylan Lewis is looking pretty strong for battle. Is that is that what we got? Yeah. In third. Uh, I mean, and as the, they uh, turn this corner, making that final stride, it looks like the Park Hill athlete oh, is also on, trying Alex. to make an effort. Come on, Alex. Keep your knees up, Alex. Alex Finish looks it like out. he's pushing through. Ooh, that was going to be a close one. Off of initial reaction, I'm going to give that to Kylan Lewis of battle, but oh. you, can't make a, you can't make a final <laughs> call until we get the official results. No, that's all right. That, that might be the right call. But Alex, Alex did well. Alex did real well, especially towards that final 20, 25 meters where he was able to close it. Looks like we got a downed athlete. All right, and entering our final heat, we have Paul Reed from Trinity Catholic, Logan Pratt, a freshman from Grain Valley. Good for you. Uh, in lane three, Gavin Monday, a senior from Fort Osage. In lane four, Matthew Marzolf, a senior from Blue Springs, who comes in with the heat leading time of 49.72. Charles Bradley, a senior from Ruskin. Quinn Zoltek, a junior from St. Michael. Joseph Simon, a junior from Staley, and Brennan Kirby, a senior from Liberty. And we'll see as they get ready to go. Matt Marzoff with the only athlete to have an entry time of under 50 seconds. So he's the leader going into the race. Let's see if he can be the leader when they finish. Marzoff looking strong out of that first turn. He's looking real strong with the wind to his back, wind behind him. Yeah, he's already made up that stagger on uh, Ruskin's Charles Bradley, he's looking real strong. And now he's turning the corner, extending his lead, and since he has the innermost lane, he doesn't have as much to run. Yeah, looking real strong. Now as they enter it. this final stretch. Finish it out, Matt, there you go. Look at that, that's a strong finish. Very oh, strong. relax a little bit, Matt. He's pushing. That's a decisive victory in a 400. Yeah. That was a great job by Matt. You could see he had a lot of speed on that first turn. And when you have a lot of speed coming off that uh, back stretch, then you're sitting pretty good. And to have the second fastest time out there in lane five, and he made up that, he made up the stagger already coming off that first turn, he was sitting in red shape and he was able to continue to push through and I'm expecting for these kind of conditions, that's going to be a pretty good time, pretty yeah. solid time. And the th 
the third place battle between uh, Gavin Monday and Logan Pratt of Fort Osage in Grain Valley was very close up until that final moment. All right, we're going to take a look at some results from boys' long jump. And Johnny Brackens from Lee Summit with a jump of 24 feet, 1 inch. And that's a, that's a solid jump by Johnny Brackens, who we said was going to be a big factor here. And, and he's shown up in the boys' long jump, winning by a foot um, over Marvin Hopkins from... Raytown South, uh, and you know what can you say about Johnny Brackens, who's able to, you know, win by a foot? That's that's saying something. that's impressive. That's very impressive. Uh, you can see rounding out, we've got uh, um, Kennedy Nuanera Nuaneri from Grandview, uh, Eric Hill from Rockhurst, and then finishing out our top eight is Jerry Martin from Battle. Two battle athletes in there scoring points for their team. There are your results from the boys. Long jump. And coming <laughs> coming into today, we expected battle athletes across across especially the field events to be really strong, having three three male pole vaulters, three female pole vaulters. And then some others. They just they have proven on all all fields that they've showed up before, and they're ready to continue. Yeah, absolutely. They've done a great job um, in this in this meet. Uh, and as you can see in that in that last heat, uh, a battle athlete was able to win that that first heat. Um, I can't pronounce that name. I can't, I can't attempt to pronounce that name, and we apologize for that, but that battle athlete did a great job. Oh, it looks like they might actually have to redo that heat. We're getting word that they didn't have all the hurdles set up correctly oh. and got a little quick on the trigger there and started the race before they had all the hurdles set up. So that heat, unfortunately, is going to have to run again probably later in the meet uh or coaches might decide hey let's it was good experience that was the first heat let's not worry about running it again we'll see that's a lot of that's pretty taxing on the yeah on the athletes so as we enter the second heat in lane one we've got jordan fleck a senior from liberty north elena clopton a junior from kirkwood callie shannon a sophomore from liberty Kira Anders, a junior from Staley. Akuna Nuasari, a freshman from Park Hill. Kenzie Kennecutt, a freshman from Lee Summit West. Akane Tinsley, a sophomore from Blue Springs. And Riley Bandit, a senior from Lee Summit West, from Liberty. I might have you put the 
Okay, now we go to Island down on the field with the 400 meter champion from Blue Springs High School, Matt Marzoff. I'm here with Matthew, um, who just won the 400 uh, meter dash. How are you feeling mentally and physically after this race? Uh, tired, but I know I'm yard, so that's all that matters. Um, what do you think to yourself in order to motivate yourself and push yourself in order to push further than the other competitors? Um, college. I just want to go somewhere, like my future. I want someone to go somewhere that's like good. So I, that's all I think about is whenever I'm finishing is just finishing strong, trying to PR every time I race. What are some of your college options? Uh, Northwest is a big one. That's my top one, and I have a couple in Iowa, so. Okay. Um. I, yeah, I think that's about it. Any other questions? Yeah, Eisen, go ahead and throw the headset on Matt. I've known Matt for a long time, so I need to ask him some questions. All right, I'll do that. There you go. What's up, Coach? Hey, how's it going, Matt? You still got to hold that mic real close up to you. That, yeah, that handheld one so we can hear you. Um, that was an impressive race in this win to break. I don't know if you know what your official time was, but it was 49-48. And in this kind of win, that was very impressive. Um, it t talk us through the race. What was, what was going through your mind as you were coming down this home stretch into that, that wind in your face? Honestly, it was the guy in the five because I knew what his time was, and it was pretty comparable to mine. And so when I was coming through the 200, I knew that I caught him. I just wanted to just, like, keep going. I didn't want him to catch back up in the curve, so I just I just had to keep going. Yeah, that was a, you showed a lot of toughness there, and that was pretty cool. Now, I do have to say, as a former head coach, I saw the last 25 meters, there was a little bit of tensing up going on. <laughs> you had your jaw clenched a little bit. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I don't know. I'm still trying to work on That's my main focus is working on that, and that's what, I'm, that's what my main focus is, and that will drop my time even more if I could focus on relaxing the last 20 meters of that race. Well, winning by over a second uh, and, or by over a half second in conditions like this uh, and breaking 50 seconds, that's that's very impressive. And so you just keep on working hard and, and keep yourself healthy and we'll look for good things to come in the, in the future of this season. Thank you, Coach. All right, that was Matt Marzoff, 400 meter champion. Uh, and we're going now to uh, some 300 meter hurdle runners. <laughs> yeah, there was a little miscommunication with the first heat. Apparently the hurdles weren't set correctly, so we're waiting to see if they'll rerun that or not. It's important in a hurdle race to have all the hurdles up <laughs> or it becomes a huge advantage for one runner. <laughs> Just hope that you're that one runner that <laughs> gets yeah. the advantage. As they come down the stretch, Elena Clopton of Kirkwood is out with a very commanding lead. Followed by a Connie Trinsley of Blue Springs and Kiera Anders from Staley. We talked about tough races before the 800 being one of them. Well, I mean, they're all tough in yeah. their own way, but a lot of times people talk about the 400 and the 800 being some of the toughest races um, from a physical standpoint, and the 300 hurdles are right up there. You are, it is, it is max out effort um, for 300. There's no pacing that's going on here or should go on here in a, in a hurdle race like this, so it's, a sh it's one of the longer short distance sprints. Uh, but now you've got to jump over eight barriers, which is difficult. I can tell you from personal experience, it is a difficult race. One of those that when you're done, you're not really sure where you are. If you run it right, you're not really sure where you are. Uh, <laughs> you don't really want to talk to anybody, or you can't really talk to anybody. 
And so it's a challenging race. Absolutely. Uh, so coming up in our third heat, we've got Allie Johnson in lane one from Blue Springs. Aleka, Aleka Strong, a sophomore from Raytown. Rebecca Hall, a freshman from Liberty North. Deshaun Witherspoon, a junior from Raytown South. Samantha Siev, a senior from Trinity Catholic. Marcelina Martin, a sophomore from Lee Summit. Jamera Colin, a senior from Raytown. And Alaya Jones, a junior from Kirkwood. As they come around the final bend, it looks like we got a really close race between Jamera Colon from Raytown and Samantha Sia from Trinity Catholic. Callie Johnson of Blue Springs trying to just push against Merlisa Martin from Lee Summit. As we enter the fourth and final heat of the girls' 300-meter hurdles, in lane one we have Lena Otto, a sophomore from Lincoln College Prep, Kayla Millett, a sophomore from Trinity Catholic, Liberty Brown, a, ju a junior from Warrensburg, Paige McGee, a junior from Battle, that's a name we've heard a couple of times, and she's shown off really well, so I'm excited to see how she does here. Akira Venerable, a sophomore from Lee Summit West. Corey Davis, a senior from Blue Springs South. Jayona Perry, a sophomore from Grain Valley. And Neely Neal, a senior from Lincoln College Prep. And Paige McGee from Battle coming in with a time of 43.94. She's a clear front runner by almost two seconds. Uh, so we should see a strong race from her. And as long as she does what she does, then she should win this. She should be finishing the race when the other athletes clearing that last hurdle. <clears throat> Strong start to the first hurdle from Liberty Brown from Warrensburg. She's going after there. She's keeping pace with with Paige right away, and we'll see come off this fifth hurdle is really when you start to tell who the elite runners are. Paige is starting to etch herself out, make it. Yep. And here's the strength. You can see a Paige but McGee. Corey She's Davis getting her knees up. Spring South really made it close. Paige is staying very smooth here on this race. A little bit of a stutter there, and as we said, she's crossing the finish line when other athletes are going over the last hurdle. Very strong race by Paige McGee Battle. Also a very strong ra race from the senior uh, Corey Davis from Arkstown Rivals in Blue Springs South. Yeah, she came in uh, in lane six, so that means she had the fourth fastest time, fifth fastest time, uh, and she was she was right there yeah, for she a while. She held in for a good chunk of that race. I think she just started to run out of gas towards the last couple of hurdles. Yeah. Now they're raising it up for the boys, 300 hurdles. And one of the differences in the 110 race and the 300 race is that they're both they're the same distance. So, in you know, in the girls' 100 hurdles, it's obviously 100, and they're, they're spaced a certain distance apart from each other. And then the boys run the 110s, and they change the spacing on that. But the 300 hurdles, all the hurdles are placed in the exact same location for the girls and the boys. The boys are just uh, higher than the girls. 
Yeah, and going with the first heat of the boys' 300 meters, we got Keegan Cool, sophomore from Staley, Kenyon Herkins, a junior from Blue Springs, Colby Hernkelson, a senior from Park Hill, Joseph Stewart, a junior from Warrensburg, Kristen Chapman, McGee. a senior from Fort Osage, Eric Strickland, a freshman from Blue Springs, Sion Lauki, a junior from Fort Osage, and Dante Wesley, a junior from Raytown. Flies forever. You can't, you mentioned that. Wait, 800 meter All right, and as this race is underway, we're joined by Eisen back on the field with the winner of the girls. 300 meter hurdles, Paige McGee. The battle. Yes, and Paige just ran an impressive 4366 in the 300 hurdles. You just finished, obviously, the 300 hurdles, which is arguably the most difficult race in track and field. As you get over that last hurdle, what do you tell yourself in order to push through and cross the line? Um, well, from the start of the start, I had my teammates yelling times at me, so I just knew that once I cleared that last hurdle, I had to go as fast as I could towards the finish line, stretch my arms out. And finish strong. And how do you pace yourself throughout this whole race? Um, I like to come out fast, get a good tempo going to the first hurdle. But other than that, I just want to go all out. I'd rather finish this race tired and on the ground than having energy left. Yeah, you did awesome. And I know you'll do great in the 200 in a little bit. Um, thank you very much for this interview. And we have to see more of you. Eisen, and here, grab Tell Paige from a former hurdle coach up here, she looked very smooth over those last 50 meters, so she did a great job not tensing up and, and finishing that race. From a former hurdle coach that was out there watching you from the last 50 meters, he said you looked awesome, you looked very smooth and very great. So. Thank you. We'll see you later in the 200. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Eisen. Uh, going with the boys' discus throw, our winner is Justin Akinmaladun from Grandview throwing 152 feet, Tony Eason from Ruskin throwing 146, and rounding at our top three is Samuel Eines from Battle going 142. Cooper Berry from Warrensburg threw 137 in our fourth place spot. Berry from Warrensburg. Okay. Keyshawn Turner is from Liberty North, throwing 131 feet, rounding out our top five. Number six is Miles Howard from Staley, throwing 129 feet. Number seven is Brandon Presser from Liberty North, throwing 126. And rounding out the top eight, we got Elon Moore from Grandview, throwing 125 feet. All right, and we just started another heat of the boys, 300 hurdles, uh, our second heat. And it looks like, oh, we had a Blue Springs South athlete go down. I think that was Sage Enfield. He wasn't able to clear that second hurdle. Looks like his teammate is looking to finish strong, Luke Fournier. 
but battle. Eric Butler coming in strong at the end. And he takes the win in that heat. Eric Butler from battle. Now we're ready for the final heat. Mm -mm. Now we're ready for the next <laughs> to the last heat. <laughs> next to the last it heat. It looks like, does it not on our sheet right here look yeah. like that's the last? Like there's enough space to fit that and I have to turn the page. <laughs> Who knew? A page <laughs> turn would throw me off. <laughs> hey, it's been a long night. It has been already, <laughs> right? We've been standing the whole time up here. At least it's not very, it's not cold up here. Yeah, no. Our camera operators, they have, they have camera been. Camera operators and the uh, trackside correspondent yeah. have been braving the elements. MVP. MVPs. So going into our third heat, we got Mylon McDaniel, a junior from Lincoln College Prep. Keyshawn Turner, a junior from Liberty North. Eric Hill, a sophomore from Rockhurst. Jonathan Hutchinson, a junior from Lee Summit. James Olson, a junior from Rockhurst. Julian Jusisic, a freshman from Trinity Catholic. Devin Pons, a senior from Raytown South. And Terrence McKinney, a junior from Raytown. Again, we apologize for all mispronunciations of names. We do not have official things to go off of, and some of these are really hard. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> you've, been doing, you've been doing a great job. <laughs> I've tried to make sure you have to say the majority <laughs> of the names because it, it does become difficult. So we hope the four families out there that are watching <laughs> <laughs> don't get offended. <laughs> As they come around the final stretch, it looks like our Lincoln College prep and Rockers kids are leading the pack. Liberty North, Trinity Catholic, and Park Hill following close behind. As we move on to the final heat of the boys' 300-meter hurdle, we got Javon Hampton, a sophomore from Ruskin, Jaden Yarber, a junior from Grain Valley, Christopher Oliush, a senior from Battle, DeMonte Blanks, a senior from Grandview, Thomas Sontag, a junior from Trinity Catholic, Brock Sandbooth, a senior from Kirkwood, Peyton Stanfield, senior from Park Hill, and William Lancer, a junior from Grain Valley. And it looks like uh, DeMonte Blanks, who, again, we saw in the 110 hurdles, uh, who dominated the 110 hurdles. He's back here, and he's the only athlete with an inter time of sub-40. He's got a 39.62, which is a very good time uh, midway through the season, so... He'll be one that he continues to progress. If you're running those kind of times now, he continues to progress, and he's definitely got a chance to break 39. And when you do that, then you're talking, okay, pretty good places at state. Yeah. And expect a good challenge from Thomas Sontag. Still has yet to break top 40, but at 40-22, he's probably the best competitor. So expect maybe a good matchup from the two of them as they go down. Yeah, we'll see how smooth they are over the hurdles here. Looks like... DeMonte's start wasn't the best. We got a little bit of a stutter over that first hurdle. Wow. Coming on the inside from Grain Valley, Gene Yarber. Again, if you can, uh, DeMonte is just not, not looking strong not in this race. Not looking strong coming down, no. Going a lot of stuttering, but we'll see if his speed, obviously he's got that 110 speed, if that can overtake here down the stretch. He'll have to make up some ground in between here. Trinity Catholic. Trinity Catholic oh. going out. And with the win, Thomas Sontag, the junior of Trinity Catholic. That was that was a good race, and I thought I thought 
Um, sorry, Demonte was from Grandview. Yeah, Christopher Olisha Ol Olissa from Cr from Battle was the one who kind of got the rough start. I mean, both of them ended up hitting the hurdles at the end of that, which just gave Thomas Sontag, who I th I'm pretty sure we could confidently say he would have won the race without the help. Yeah, and and that was my bad on uh, I confused Demonte and, and Chris together when we were talking through that race. Um, Demonte, Chris had several stutters throughout that, but Demonte did a nice job. But uh, like you said, Thomas from Trinity Catholic, Thomas Sontag, uh, did a great job just staying smooth down the stretch. Hold on one second. Stand, stand by. I just, what did you say, Ben? And I'll I'll let you know. Okay. When you hear me, when you hear me say Aslan's name, then you know you're okay. All right. I All right, and we go track side again with Aislin. Uh, who do you got with us, Aislin? I have Thomas from Trinity Catholic. He just finished the 300 boys hurdles, and he ran a 40-38, which is very, very impressive. Uh, tell us, what do you tell yourself throughout this entire race, and how do you motivate yourself? Uh, I just say keep working, you know. You just It comes down to the 300 hurdles. Who's going to win it? Who's got the most heart? Who's going to come on the last... Straight away, arms pumping, going as fast as you can. Who's got the most endurance? Who wants it the most? And how do you keep um, a good physical strength and mental strength throughout this? Um, physical strength, I'll do my coach. Push me every day. Work as hard as you can, 120%. Every race, every practice, that's, that's what I got. And how do you keep mental strength through it? Um, honestly, that's pretty hard. You know, I've been chasing the 39, so it's not good enough till we get that. So um, just keep on working hard, keep the heart, keep pushing. It's always good to have a goal. So thank you very, very much, Thomas, and hopefully we'll see you again in the next meet. Thank you, guys. All right, and as we are looking at this girl's first 800-meter uh, heat, uh, we've got an update on the girls' standings. Yeah, after eight events, we've got the top eight coming in with Battle in first with 62 points, Lee Summit West in second, 44 points, Park Hill in third with 30 points, Trinity Catholic in fourth with 28 points, Blue Springs in fifth place with 26 points, Liberty North in sixth place with 23 points, Raytown in seventh with 21 and a half points, and Warrensburg, Blue Spring South, and Kirkwood all tied in eighth place with 19 points. Those were your standings for the girls after eight events. And now we're, we've got this first seat of the girls' 800 underway. And it looks like we've got a clear front runner. And is that uh, is that Mary Ralston from Kirkwood? I think it is. Kind of looks like it. And we've got a pack behind her. Yeah. She's battling for second a little bit. Yeah, but she's setting a very strong precedence for herself early on. She is.
And it does look like that Mary Ralston from Kirkwood's going to come in first. And as we finish up this heat, this next heat, uh, this final heat that we have at Girls' 800, again, we've talked about them before, but the Lee Summit West girls uh, with a very strong team, and Audrey Parsons is coming in with uh, the best time at 2.18, and she's got the best time by five seconds. Uh, and so it'll be interesting to see if the number two seed, Tessa Valdivia from Blue Springs High School, can challenge her in this race. I expect Tessa, uh, knowing her, another student I've had in class and I've known her family for a long time, I expect her to give a great effort here. Yeah. And just kind of viewing some of Tessa's things, especially in like the cross country area and those other long distance events stuff, she's very, she puts in the effort when it matters. So expect her to make some moves around the 200 meter, 100 meter mark, maybe try and close the distance. And she'll have a tall task because Audrey Parsons competed at the at that Arcadia meet, which is for those of uh, for those viewers that don't know, the Arcadia meet is out in California, and it's a premier high school track meet uh, in which athletes from all over the country go there to compete. And Audrey Parsons recently went there and uh, and did very very well in in multiple events, and so she's definitely the the front runner here, uh, and it'll be. Exciting, it'll be an exciting race. And here we go with the girls 800. Looks like Looks like Audrey Parson is taking out a strong start as she works herself to get the inside lane there. And you can see she's quite a bit ahead of the pack here. Looks like Tessa Valdivia has settled in for to the second position. And we can see Audrey Parson is taking out a strong lead, a commanding lead here. With Tessa, Madeline Hills up there as well from Liberty. She's a strong runner. Uh, we've got four girls that are under 225 here in this race. Um, and so in the Hayward Garden from Lee Summit West, you know, they got two of them there that are they're pushing in that second pack. You can see that Audrey Parson is definitely got a commanding lead, and then there's four runners back there that are all within striking distance. And that's Madeline Hill, who's keeping contact, trying to make a final push, but Audrey Parson is staying strong, staying collected. They're giving everything they got. And Audrey Parsons comes through with the win for Lee Summit West. Tessa Valdivia uh, comes in third. All right, now we're going to go to some uh, results for guys, team results after eight events. 
Yeah, uh, and leading the pact is Battle with a very commanding league of 64 points. Grandview is coming in second with 39. And Trinity and Catholic, Trinity Catholic and Blue Springs both vying really hard for that third or second place spot with 37 points each. In fifth place, we have Lee Summit with 29. Sixth place is Stately and Kirkwood with 24 points even. Liberty and Rockhurst come in eighth place with 23 points even. And Ruskin is rounding off the top 10 with 22 points. And as you mentioned before, that is very impressive by Battle. Yeah, to be that far ahead after eight events, they've just done a great job. Yeah, and Battle's field events has probably helped a lot, seeing as they've recently been very, very dominant in that field, bringing three pole vaulters in both girls and boys, bringing in a couple triple jumpers and long jumpers. Yeah, they look like a very strong team. All right, so now we're going to start the heats for the boys' 800-meter run. Uh, in our first lane, we got Rayvon Epperson from Grandview, Andrew Coiler from Fort Osage, Isaac Muir from Liberty, Jonathan House from Liberty North, Thomas Forhope from Blue Spring South, Trenton Smith from Park Hill, Jonathan Velasquez from Grandview, Justin King, and Justin King from Liberty North, rounding up your top eight. Yeah. So far, we've got a very strong outing from Fort Osage's Andrew Coiler, who's leading the pack. So not by much, but it's still elite, which in a lot of races can really provide a lot of stamina, especially going into the last 100. But could also be the detriment in that you wasted a whole bunch trying to create the lead. You've got uh, Thomas Froholt closing in right behind him. Closing in behind him is... Another dude. Okay, I have two questions for you. That okay. I cannot see. Okay, and we go back to eyes now uh, with the 800 meter champion uh, from the girls, Audrey Parsons. Yes, I'm here with Audrey Parsons. She's from Lee Summit West. Uh, you just pulled through on an 800 meter run. How do you keep the physical strength to just keep crossing that line? I just know that. The faster I run, the faster I'm done. And I know when I get tired, I just have to keep pushing to that finish line because you don't know like who's behind you or who could come from behind and pass you. So you really just got to like find that mental strength to just push through. And some of those went up pretty close on you towards the end. How, how did you find motivation yourself to really just get past her? I actually couldn't really hear her. I didn't exactly know until I like finished and then saw her right behind me. But I... I knew who Malin Hill was, so I knew I had to just keep pushing because I knew she could come from behind. Uh, what kind of things have you learned while running this incredibly difficult event? I learned that you have to go out fast and like push that pace so you can like get kick out of the other people on the who you're running against. So you really just gotta like go out, start out fast, like you're gonna finish. Well, thank you very much. You did awesome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Back to you guys.
All right, once again, congratulations to Audrey Partners from Summit West winning the girls' 800. And now we have the final heat of the boys' 800. Yeah, starting starting off with our top time, 157, we have Jack Warner from Staley, Reginald King from Grandview, Martin Strong from Kirkwood, Lucas Hoop from Rockhurst, Kevin McLean from Blue Springs, Royce Fisher from Grain Valley, Daniel Garrison from Liberty, Nathan Berry from St. Joe Central, Dylan Grover from Blue Springs South, and Elijah Simpson from Blue Springs are rounding up your top ten and competitors all within a, a couple few seconds, seconds of, of each, each other. other. Yeah, we've got all those runners you just mentioned with the 206 or under. Uh, one of them, Jack Warner from Staley, running under two minutes. And so in a race we talked about before, in a race that doesn't feature Gabe McLean, it features his brother who's a strong runner, doesn't feature Gabe McLean, then uh, this race is, is up grabs. Yeah. Very interested to see how those top ten will compete with each other. You can see they're all staying pretty tight. I would expect off this turn we're going to see a little bit of separation. Yeah. Uh, but really, all these guys are under 210. And so, it's, you know, when you've got that many guys packed in together, it's, it becomes pretty congested for a while. It's really anybody's race. It's like our Blue Springs South runner, Dylan Grover. Pulling ahead early on. Can you ask that? <clears throat> Kevin McLean going to move on the outside, trying to overtake. Oh, and it spring, looks like he's going south. to. And now and blue, blue Spring South, Dylan Grover is. From longtime teacher and principal in, in the Blue Springs School District, Kevin Grover, who is actually my science teacher. Oh. <laughs> I was at school. Small world. Oh, and now Kevin McLean is getting over overtaken by a good chunk of the crowd. Martin Strong from Kirkwood is taking first place. And he is looking strong down the finish. Oh, Staley's not done yet. This Jack is close. Looks like he's making a push. Oh! Oh, I cannot. I don't know. That was that was very close. That was close. I don't think we can call that. No, I I think strong, strong had that, or I was sure strong had that, and then Jack Warner hit something in his tanks. Yeah, he had a little left over there. Maybe could have used that a little bit earlier, but. He came on strong, might have stolen it away. We'll see when the official results come through. Yeah, overall, just some very strong running from yeah. Martin Strong and Jack Warner. Yeah, that was close. That might take him a little time to sort yeah. out there. And they're still trying to officially sort that out because it was so close. Looks like they're still talking down there at the timer's table. Yeah. Good thing we've got multiple cameras on it down there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was just, that was an incredible about 10 meters. Yeah, and it looks like we just got official word. It was Jack Warner 
from Staley. Jack Warner from Staley. He snuck in there and got it. He ran a 2.02.33, and Martin Strong was 2.02.38. So five hundredths of a second wow. separated those two. I thought Strong hit it. <laughs> it's just, I guess it's amazing what the human spirit can do. <laughs> oh, look at you. Getting all cheesy on us here. Getting all cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> the 800, the 800 got you cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> and got you cheesy. Uh, put it on a t-shirt. Put it on a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so as we're, as we're nearing towards the, the end of this night, we hit the girls 200 meter dash. Starting off in our first, in our first flight, we got Victoria Hardy from Grandview, Lindy Cocker from Kirkwood, Hallie Webb from Lincoln College Prep, Jenna Johnson from Liberty North, LaKayla Stinson from Grandview, and Kathy Bounds from Liberty. you guys like sports broadcast like class or something? This is actually our first time doing a broadcast. Um, it's not necessarily... Oh, yeah, I'm ready. Okay, we have, we're going back to Iceland, who has got our 800-meter champion uh, with us. I'm here with Jack, and he's from Staley. He just finished uh, the 800-meter run with a 2.2.33. Um, now that the 800 race is over, what kind of things do you do to kind of cool down, get yourself relaxed, and, uh, you know, really, you know? Um, I'll probably go do a couple laps on the infield and then drink some Gatorade and stretch before my next race. Uh, and what are you feeling after that 800? I was happy it was less windy. That's about it. It was a tight race, like a lot of bumping, but it ended up working out. Uh, what race do you have after that? The 4x4. Four four. All right. Uh, do we have any other questions for him? Yeah, go ahead and throw that, throw that headset on in there. All right. Jack, this is Coach Marble up here in the press box, and that was a very impressive race. I, I didn't know if you were going to be able to pull that off. We saw you closing on up here, and we said, does he have enough, does he have enough? And you yeah. went by five hundredths of a second. Yeah. Talk us through that last 20 meters. Um, it just coming off the last curve, people were inside and outside, and I knew that I was going to have to go around people to make a move. And that's just what happened. And uh, with Martin and I at the end, I was just able to have enough distance to close the gap quicker. Yeah, and have, have you had any uh, races against Martin? It seems like that was just great competition there. Uh, only the state 800 last year. Awesome. Well, hey, we wish you guys the best, and you, you both stay healthy, and, you know, we throw a couple other guys in there. It's going to be a very exciting race down yep. the state, so congratulations. Yep. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Good luck on the Thank you. So as we enter the third heat of the – of the girls 200 meter dash we've got Serena Williams the senior from battle who's kind of already made a name for herself here at the Gary Parker Invitational um, but she's in the the second to last fastest heat so it'll be interesting to see how she compares to everyone else in the in the fastest heat see if she can overcome that and get into there
All right, let's see if Tylee can have herself a good race here. Go Wildcat TV, right? Go Wildcat TV. There you go. <laughs> so Randall Williams really pushing it out there for battle. It's going to look strong again. Oh. <laughs> I think Ser Serena took that heat, I believe. Yeah, I do too. I think... Uh, Jasmine Newberry, though, made it certainly a close race for her. Yeah, and only a freshman. That's that's impressive. So, yeah. It's uh, good, a couple it's good to see her further down or maybe even into state in her upcoming years. Yeah, that was a really strong race. And now we're ready for our final, final heat. heat. Well, we got Chloe Sanez, the sophomore from Staley. Shelby Butts, the senior from Raytown. Paige McGee, who has also made a name for herself mm -hmm. from Battle. Kalia Johnson from Park Hill. Amari Grimes, who we've heard a couple of times, the senior from Fort Osage. Dana Reed, a sophomore from Trinity Catholic. Brooke Moore, a freshman from Trinity Catholic. And Charlie Ritchie, a junior from Lee Summit West. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see how Paige McGee does because she won the 300 hurdles. And... You know, it seems like that race was a while ago because we had the 400s and then the 800s, but it, it really goes by very quickly for an athlete. And so to be able to recover that quickly and still run a race that at the end of a 200, it gets to that point where you're starting to tap into that 300, you know, type energy and your muscles are starting to be pushed to that limit of, okay, now I'm, I'm past... I'm past my sprint phase, and now I'm kind of holding on at the end. It's just kind of getting right to that point towards the end of the race, so we'll see how much she has left in the tank. Yeah. You can say the same <laughs> for Amari Grimes. She's had a little bit more time in between races, but a lot of her races were those sprints and those really quick things that mm -hmm. arguably take more out of you because you have to do everything just so instantly and so quick. Right, right. All right, as they make the first turn. It looks like Johnson from Park Hill might not be in the race, huh? Yeah. Looks like there was a scratch. We couldn't tell. We got a start. really good battle between Paige, Kalia, Ooh, and here we Chloe go. from Staley. Oh, she turned it on. Look at that at the end. That Paige was impressive. Key. Another win for her in Battle High School. That was impressive. I think that was under 26. Uh, we had a watch of unofficial watch up here, and that was that was impressive, especially coming off the 300 yeah. hurdles. We'll wait for official word, because we don't know if you know. Yeah, maybe something happened. That he before mm -hmm. was was fairly fast too with Serena Williams, and her being such a great athlete, you yeah. never know what might happen there, but. For all indications, it seems like her teammate, Paige, Paige McGee. McGee. And we just got official word that Paige McGee won the 200, uh, but it was very, very close. Serena Williams in the heat before had 
uh, ran a 26-28, so only four hundredths of a second separated those two. Wow. It would have been great to see them yeah. in the same heat. And Islam is going to make her way with uh, those two being teammates and doing such a great job. It's such a close race. Yeah. We started. Yeah, and really Jasmine Newberry from Daly, that freshman that we talked about, she she rounded it out with a 26-2-9, so she was only 100th off Serena. So that would have been... That would have been great to get all of them in the final heat. You're talking yeah. about five hundredths of a second separating the first, second, third place. It's an exciting finish. Yeah, that definitely would have made the last heat very interesting. Okay, and now we've got Eisen back, and Eisen, you've got a couple teammates down there, Paige Yee and Serena Williams, both from Battle, who just had an amazing battle on the track, even though they weren't in the same heat. Yeah, they both just competed in the 200-meter da dash, and uh, Serena lost to Paige by four hundredths of a second. Um, but a situation happened with Serena where she was put into the wrong heat, so we're here with both of them talk about that. So with the situation, how do you feel about what happened? Are you proud of what happened? I'm ecstatic about what happened. I'm so proud of my teammate and he for being able to step up. And even though it was hard to race against yourself in a, a slower heat, I'm, I'm glad that I was able to put in up, up enough time for both of us to pick our team up and get us points for first and second. That's great, you know, team uh, teamwork and uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Support of each other. There we go. <laughs> um, and how do you both, um, you know, train yourself to uh, be quick in such uh, in such a short race? Well, um, we're both like around the same marks for the meet. Like this difference between us today is literally just about the difference in all of our races that we run the 200 together. I think that like just practicing with each other and um, pushing each other is great. Also, like our coaching, we do great stuff to um, help us be explosive and keep the endurance throughout the race. Well, you guys both did great. I'm so glad you're happy for each other. You know, there's no hard feelings. Uh, do you guys have any races after this? No, uh, we're both done competing for the night. We maxed out at four events each, and I'm pretty sure we brought whole four gold medals, each of us. Yep. So you guys have done great at the meet, and this has been a huge meet too. So you guys have done amazing for such a big meet. Uh, thank you guys so much for being on so many interviews with us, <laughs> and I'm so glad you guys did awesome. You got to bring as many medals as you did to your school. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that was Paige McGee and Serena Williams from Battle, and what was awesome. I I, I know you weren't able to hear that, but they were talking about. Um, how they were really happy for each other as teammates. And even though, you know, there was maybe a little bit of a mess up there and they should have been in the same heat competing against each other, um, Serena was really excited for Paige, and they were just happy to be able to get first and second for their team. So that, that's really special when you've got two competitors like that who score a lot of points for their team, who obviously individually do really well, but uh, still have that support for each other. Yeah, it shows, it shows great great team teamwork um as i mentioned earlier it also shows great maturity in the athletes being able to understand that sometimes situations happens where it's like not exactly fair or anything but still be able to take great pride in it and i mean it just shows great maturity from those from those two players and the, the track coach at battle should have like all the respect for those two ladies yeah, absolutely, and they have, have scored a lot of points for their team, and as, when we get an official update soon during the 3,200 that shows the team standings, you're going to see that, that they have done well for their team. <laughs> yeah, I mean, battle has, 
Battle is leading both the men's and the girls in, in points. And they've just, they've come out, they've come here from Columbia. And they've just, they've shown everyone that they're, that they're meant to be here. And I've, I've got a really good feeling about them heading over into state with a really strong lineup of both girls and boys. Yeah, they do. They're a very, very strong team. And in, in not only the track, but, but in the field as well. So we've got the, what, what heat are we on here? Yeah, that was a nice that was a nice finish there, uh, and I think that was our third heat, and so got some pretty good times coming out of there as well. Eric Hill was our winner in the third third heat. Yeah, he did a great job. Still, still take that Kirkwood athlete. Um, Orville Ferguson, still take him on the football field. Just just move him over <laughs> 40 feet and let's get him on the football field and see what kind of damage he can do because as yeah, so a now, as muscular we, guy yeah. running people down. Yeah. As we enter our fourth heat, we've got Dave Traven Bagby from Raytown South, and Antonio McCullough from Park Hill, Pazzo Topsoa from Blue Springs, Joseph Simon from Staley, Clint Purcell from Rockhurst, Terry Tenarius Kent from Battle, Demarius Walker from Blue Springs, and Adrian Church from Ruskin. That's another one you deserve a medal for. That was that, <laughs> that was, was impressive. Something right there were there. lots of names there. That was good stuff. And we'll see how Patso can do. He would um For those of you watching that tune into Wildcat football at all, you remember Patso Tapusoa catching the last second Hail Mary game winning touchdown at least some at high school. It was one of the coolest I do endings that. to a game I've ever been a part of. I've never seen I've never personally been a part of a game where literally as time runs out, a Hail Mary is thrown forty yards and he's in the back of the end zone and catches it in the back of the end zone for a touchdown, a walk-off win, and that was pretty special. We'll see how he does here in the 200. She's still got one more heat. You didn't tell him you're in your lane, right? <laughs> Entering our final, our final okay. heat of the boys' 200 yard dash. We got number in our first lane. We got Gavin Monday from Fort Osage, Tyler Luke from Grand Valley, Lar Martin from Battle, Kamerick Winston from Trinity Central, Taryn Winters from Liberty. Micah Manning from Lee Summit, Mark Robinson from Staley, and Talon Moffat from Liberty North. Kamarik Winston is from Trinity Catholic. That was my bad. <laughs> All right, and I'm really excited to see Kamarik Winston. Uh, here from Trinity Catholic, he's got a time of 21:54, which is an outstanding time, especially this, you know, midway through a season. Yeah. Is he is he running? It looks like we've got several scratches here. I think he's still running. Yeah, I think he's still running. Um, there are people cheering for him. Stand. <laughs> <coughs> 
Who got a little bit of a battle here. Nice lean going in there. Nice battle between him and the kid. Oh, from look battle. at that smooth stride. Look at that. Wow. Yeah. That was very smooth. Yeah, Kamarik pulled that out towards the end. Yeah. A good competition with Laura Martin from Battle. Like I've said, Battle High School more than anything else today. You have, and that's where they're in the lead. <laughs> yeah. But that was that was impressive. There's there's no question that anybody from the heat before caught him. That that didn't happen. No. We had an unofficial time from up here, which is not the best angle, but that was under 22, uh, which you know, we know his time coming in was 21.54, so on a little bit cooler evening, and there's still a decent amount of wind in the face down this home yeah. stretch. So that was very impressive. I'm looking forward to seeing this official time here. <clears throat> All right, and it looks like official time here for Kamarik Winston was 22.19. And uh, as we said, very impressive, very impressive time for the conditions. And he wasn't, I mean, he was challenged through the first 100, but after he got to about the 120, 130 mark, there, there was no question what was yeah. going to happen. So he wasn't pushed at the end either. All right, so now we're nearing the end of our of our night, starting off with the girls' 3,200-meter run with the top five times all being from Lee Summit West. In the, uh, Kimerick, is that how we pronounce his name, Kimerick? Okay. We have results in the girls' 800 meter run. Eight plays. So, Tanya, you have back from the All right, as we begin this 3200 race, we're going to go down to Island on the field, and you have got the 200 meter champion, Kamara Winston from Trinity Catholic. Uh, and he did a great job. He did. I'm here with Kamara, and he ran a 2219 at the 200, and he did amazing. Thank you. Um, so you managed to really pull through at the end. It was a very close race. What drove you to really tell yourself to push and get across that finish line? Um, well, I know LaRue, um, the one I was racing against, um, we do this all the time. He's a good com I got, I'm sorry. He's a good competitor. Um, he pushed me all the time. We push each other. Um, at the losing, the 4 by 2 and 4 by one he was just, I can't get this one up this time. Yes, ma'am. Um, how did you prepare yourself? How do you always prepare yourself practices and stuff for an event like this? Practice, I, um, I all work harder. I know I, every time I lose a race or I don't have a good time, I know what I have to do. I go back to practice, work harder, and I just do the next meet. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Back to you guys. All right, that was Kamarik Winston from Trinity Catholic, your 200-meter champion with an excellent time of 22.19, uh, especially in these conditions. And uh, that that's a young man right there that definitely is going to make some waves down at state. Oh, if absolutely. He can, if he can like that on a night like this. Yeah, imagine how it will be if the night is calm and 
not freezing. Yeah, and as as we had talked to Coach Cusack uh, before the meet, he mentioned him by name and said he is one of the top sprinters in the state in any class. Mm -hmm. So not just the class that he's in, but any class uh, of runners that we have, he is one of the top sprinters. So that yeah. says something when you can when you can be that noticeable across the entire state. Yeah. And really, we look in this race, uh, at least some of the West, uh, Ginger Murniex. Yeah. Who she's, she's about 50 seconds ahead of the field, so we really look for her. I know that Lee Summit, Lee Summit West has got um, one, two, three, four, five runners in this event. Only three can score, but they're getting work in for their girls. Um, only two can score, sorry. Uh, but you can see those three up in front are really pushing each other. Yeah. And they're already in control of this race. <laughs> While the 3,200 meters run, we're going to run some highlights past you. And the boys' high jump got Cooper Weiss from Kirkland taking the first place slot with 6.07. <coughs> Patrick Kelly from Liberty was 6.05. And then we got a bit of a confusion. In third place, we got Javion Byers from Liberty huh? with a 6.03. Two fourth place finishes in Don Morgan from Staley and Jalen Noel from Park Hill. Also with a 6.03. And two eighth place finishes, sixth place finishes, Dejan Young from Trinity Catholic and Jake Sh Schmood from Staley, all with a 6.03. And finishing at our top eight is Carter Bell from Warsburg with a 
Yeah, he And they're running. And they're still running. And they're still running. <laughs> As the 3200 is still going on, we're going to bring you back some more highlights. Uh, from the boys' javelin throw, we got Braden Presser from Liberty North in our first place spot with 178 feet. Braden Bucksaff, also from Liberty North, takes our second place with 175 feet. In our third place, we got Marquise Robinson from Kirkwood at 152 feet. Fourth place, Seth Garrison from Park Hill at 149 feet. In fifth place, Juanola Grace from Staley at 147 feet. And our sixth place is Julian Jusiznik from Trinity Catholic at 147 feet. Okay, and it looks like we got our first finisher coming through. And that was impressive. Two Lee Summit West girls. Finishing back to back. Back to back. And Kirkwood coming in third. slow getting around we're not on right now right we are on right uh -oh. now with coach I'll join I bet, here I sound like i'm on you're not gonna be able to hear anything through the our headsets okay okay but we can we can still talk to each other so okay. we're actually on right here All right great and i'm joined now by coach joe cusack of the boys team and uh coach it's been a great meet so far it's real it's really been a lot of good competition it's uh it's been an exciting track and field night. A little, little chilly outside, but, uh, you know, I, I don't really mind when you see this many kids competing this hard. Uh, we're, very, uh, we're very fortunate to get a couple of St. Louis teams in the battle from Columbia. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I haven't seen the team scores are, are kind of inaccurate because the, a lot of the field events aren't in the score yet. Right. But uh, I'm guessing when the field events come through that battle, Liberty, North, Kirkwood, those three teams are going to probably po possibly be the top three teams in the meet. Yeah, uh, it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, we kind of struggle in the field events this year, so I don't not going to get many points out of that. And uh, but I'm happy with what we've been doing on the track. We've been competing well on the track tonight. Yeah, definitely. And and as you said, Battle High School, they've been very impressive. And when we when we get Coach Reader up here, we'll talk on the girls' side, but on the boys' side, they they have been impressive. And are they are they now in the same track classes are different than football classes? Are they in the large class? Yeah, the battles in the large okay. class. There's five classes in track. Uh, you know, we're in a district this year, District 6, uh, Blue Springs, Blue Springs South, Lee Summit, Lee Summit North. We join um, – that's my phone. Sorry, I'm going to make it go off here for a second. That's all right. All right. Just give me just a second here. Um, 
we are in a district with Blue Springs, Blue Springs South, mm -hmm. Lee Summit, Lee Summit North, and then we joining us, which is going to be at Fort Osage High School on May 11th. We're going to host the meet at Fort Osage due to construction here. Mm -hmm. ba uh, excuse me, Hickman from Columbia, Rockbridge from Columbia, Sedalia Cotton, and Jefferson City will join in that meet. That will be a very, very tough district. Seven of the eight teams finished in the top 15 at the state meet last year. And then when that meet ends, the next weekend, we will go to Sedalia and we will be joined up with a district out of the St. Louis area that has battle from mm. Columbia in that district mm. and seven St. Louis teams, including CBC, who already has this year one state in football, one state in wrestling, and they were state runner-up in basketball. Right. So our sectional meets wow. will be... It's going to be a very rough road for some of our athletes to get through those two weekends, even to get to the state meet. So we'll we'll have low numbers probably going with us at the end of the year. But if we stay healthy and do things right, we, we could have some very high-end events at the state meet, which will be exciting for us. Mm -hmm. And not to – we don't want to talk about this too much, but sometimes it gets frustrating when you have such a tough district followed by such a tough sectional and you got guys that maybe they – didn't get out in districts that could have placed at state. Does that does that get frustrating to coach that it, they don't do it like swimming where there's right. you know times that you can you hit this and you automatically sure. qualify for state? It, it can. I mean, one thing that I do like about track is that you know you you do have the opportunity to pave your way, mm -hmm. even if the road is harder. It's harder. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, it, well, you could sit back and you could fuss about that or be kind of disgruntled about that, but. I see two sides to it because I grew up in southwest Missouri at Neosho High School. And I remember when I was in high school, I watched the varsity track team when I was an eighth grader. They got third at state, class three. I couldn't wait to be varsity. The next year, my sophomore year, we, we moved to class four. We're now the little guy out of 90-some-odd yeah. schools. Uh, I was thrilled just to qualify for state on a relay. We didn't get all state. We just were happy to get to the meet. Right. But I do see a little bit of a – Understanding with the state wanting some regional representation at yeah. the state meet, uh, I think that some of the, you know if you do, if you didn't have that at all, it might hurt the sport. Right, you right. Know, there might be certain areas where people just quit doing the sport. Yeah, so. yeah. That, that's a very good point, Coach. Talk about uh, Matt Marzov's performance in a forty-nine forty-eight in these conditions where it's it's colder. Uh, he's coming down the stretch here, and he's got the wind in his face, and he yes. powers through. Is the only guy to go sub 50 in this meet right uh, that was impressive I you know we had him entered at 4972 and he uh, he's done that and we've seen that time and to see him do that tonight at home you know he looked like a guy that, I watched him after school today I saw him when he got out of school coming down the hallways I was doing things to get ready for the meet he's always got a different focus than some of our other guys he's a two mm -hmm. Two-year All-State athlete. He was, uh, you know, he led off the four by four his sophomore year that helped us win the state title on the final event. So he runs with, with the swagger. He runs with a lot of confidence, and you could see that tonight. And I think he came into the meet. Uh, he he was looking for a challenge from Prince Griffin, his teammate, who was supposed to be in lane three in that race. And we we scratched Prince tonight. He's got a quad that's been a little irritated. Didn't feel like it was worth the risk. We're going to try to have him the, to run at KU this weekend. If not, mm -hmm. uh, we'll see him. He'll definitely be back in the lineup by St. Louis in two weeks. But I think he was hoping to have a one-two finish with his senior teammate that he runs on the relays with so much. Um, but he made sure he took care of business, and that was impressive. And uh, he's definitely, you know, potentially our MVP tonight just off that off that one event. Now, Gabe McLean's on the track right now right. running the 3,200. He's yeah. a stellar field. These, these guys from Kirkwood and Rockhurst, uh, they, they, they're the real deal. So This is, this this is, is one of the most impressive fields. Yes. Um, in the whole meet where we've got Christian Baker from defending Kirkwood, state champion defending from Kirkwood. state champion, Gay McLean, Thomas Seitzer from Rockhurst, another Rockhurst, Wesley Porter from, from Rockhurst. I mean, there's some good, there's some good athletes here in Absolutely. this, in this race. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I know Gabe was probably, he probably felt a little disappointed getting, getting, was he third earlier in the 1600? I think he got beat by, uh, or he was second, he got right. beat by the kid, uh, the, he got beat by Baker. Right, yeah, uh, and yeah. And Gabe, Gabe was the leader for a few laps, and, you know, Baker set on him, and Baker had a great kick. And he had a really good kick. I thought really I nice thought, kick. I thought, thought Gabe was going to be able to maybe outkick him just the right. foot speed that he has, but yes. Baker looked like he was like, I could do this and three that more laps. that says a lot about Baker <laughs> because, you know, McLean, first meet of the year this year, ran a 155.06 and followed it up with a 50.4 in the 5.4. So wow. you know what kind of speed Gabe's got. Yeah. Well, I think Baker's got <laughs> – 
just as much, if not more. Right, right. That very was very impressive. impressive. Yeah. And, Coach, just kind of the last thing, you've had one of the most impressive runs the last six years of any coach in any sport in our school history. And I don't want to mess this up. In the last six years, what's been our, our state finishes? Last seven, actually. Last, last seven. Last seven years. Last seven years, we've been second, second, first, first, third, first, third. Wow. In that order. And it's been a great run. We're the first team in the large division. You know, the large division chain from class four, class five. Mm -hmm. I just look at us, just analyze the largest division in track. We're the first team in the large division to trophy seven years in a row since Kansas City Central in 1972. So Wow, that's very impressive. To say that. And Kansas City Central had a serious run from the 60s into the 70s. I think they trophied like 10, at least 10 years in a row, and nine of them were championships. I mean, they, they had quite a program back in the late 60s into the early 70s. Right. Well, those kind of things don't happen anymore, but they did happen. Uh, and you bring so much to just this program, your passion, uh, your focus, attention to detail, all those things that make our athletes better. Um, you've had an amazing run. and, and Thank you. We're, just, we're appreciate glad you're here and not someplace else. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. I, I'm glad I'm here. I, I love it here. And, you know, working with you, you know, we've worked together in track and football mm -hmm. both. And, you know, all the coaches around here, I've, I've always said uh, it's not just the track coaching staff that's made this track program strong. It's the coaches in general in our school uh, that our, our coaches, you know, are bond well about caring about the best interest of our kids, you know, seasonally. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm, I, I talk to my kids on, on the track program a lot about we're going to make your football, we're going to make you a better football player. If you, mm -hmm. if you buy in, you know, if you, if you, if you come around half, you know, half time and put in half effort, then we can't make you a better football right, player. Right. You got to make a commitment. And I understand this isn't your favorite sport. It doesn't have to be. It wasn't mine growing up. I mean, football was one, track was two. And but as a coach, you know, track became something I just just fell in love with it as a coach. And, uh, and I just I, I have a lot of respect for the young men around our school and the girls that, that continue to want to be in our track and field program on either side. And, and, and I'm really happy with how many of them are receiving money at college, continuing their careers. Gabe's having a tough night in this race. I think he's... Uh, yeah, it looks like he's falling back kind of in he's the... He's having a tough night. Third this pack is, uh, there. You know, he's, he's a speed guy. I'm not sure this race factors in down the big picture for him. But, uh, right. you know, I know he uh, he was expecting to be up there with that front pack, and he's with the two pack right now. So, uh, yeah. but he's a great... That, there's a young man, in addition to Matt Marzoff, I, I can't say enough good things about uh, Gabe McLean. Yeah. Great athlete, great person, and and uh, you're a great coach and a great person. So we appreciate you visiting us up here, and this hey, has been welcome. an awesome meet. It's been run off so well, and so thank I you. know people are having a really good time. So I appreciate, we appreciate you your time. this webcast together, and thank you to all the people out there that you know, put $10 out of their pocket to watch high school track and field tonight. Thank you very much, and uh, Barry Parker meet means a lot to me and, and one another reason to, to close here tonight is uh who it's named after and coach mm -hmm. marvel was fortunate enough to run under coach parker and you know i'm just someone that came in after he retired i never got to work with him but i obviously worked at other schools before being here and i'm well aware of the tradition he established here and that's really what we have you know tried to sustain and uh, and do our part to keep the tradition going and i think uh you know, I'm proud to say that I believe that we've been doing that. Absolutely, Coach. Thank All you right. so much for your time. Right. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you.
Keller, this is the last lap of the boys. We need to see the finisher first, and as soon as the finishers are done, we'll go to her interview. It. Ask her if she's okay waiting. Is she okay waiting? This is the last lap for the boys. Christian Baker. Yeah. So as we're nearing the final stretch, Christian Baker, who has the heavy favorite coming into this race, is going to take a commanding lead and end up finishing first, followed closely behind by either Thomas Seitzer or Wesley Porter of Rockhurst. We're not we're not exactly sure which is which. From they, up here. they finished three, so somewhere someone did really well. <laughs> yes, they did a really good job. It looks like Ryan Matta. Uh, from Liberty is going to go ahead and finish in Four. third. Or I mean fourth. We got Woodson. Warnsburg and then Gabe McClellan. Okay, we're now joined on the sideline with Aislinn again. And uh, Aislinn, you have the girls' 3,200 meter winner. Yes, I do. Here with me, I have Ginger from Lee Summit West, who just won the 3,200 meter race. You just finished the longest race in track and field. Can you tell us how you possibly motivate yourself enough to get past that finish line? Um, I just really like distance running, and um, it's just like really exciting for me. I told myself it's not as long as a 5K, so like it's like. Everyone thinks the two miles is really long track, but it's still like a mile shorter than anything you do in cross country. So, and then I just kind of try to like focus on like running one lap at a time, and like hitting splits, and then pretty soon you don't have a lap to go, and then you can just run, like give it all you have. And you ran a 10:53. So, what motivates you the most to get a, a time like that? Um, I don't know, just like continue to push myself, like be the best that I can be, and like I want to get new personal records and just like keep getting better so like kind of just competing against myself and like I like racing other people but like I, like anytime like I can get my personal best like that's really exciting so. Lisa Mott West has a great distance program so what does that mean to be alongside so many great distance runners? It's just really exciting like at practices we're all like pushing each other and like if I'm not having a good day then like one of my teammates will like yell at me to like stay with them or like just like we're all kind of pushing each other like if one of us is having a hard workout we can like motivate each other to like stay with the group and just keep getting new records for all of us. Friendly competition is always the best so thank you very much Ginger thank you guys back to you. Alright we are getting ready for the 4x4 four four, which is uh, it's the last race so last race. People like it for that, but then also <laughs> it's it's one of the most exciting races because yeah. you got four athletes back to back giving their all in one of the toughest races individually, and now you put four of them back to back, and you've got great uh, you got just great excitement to end the meet. Yeah. Well, there you go, sorry. 
make sure that somebody doesn't have one there. Hey, have you guys gotten results for like long jump or anything? Yeah. For girls or anything? Okay. We're gonna be here for a minute, just kind of talking, waiting for results to pull in. All right, now Eisen is joined with winner of the 3200, Christian Baker from Kirkwood, picking up his second gold medal in an individual event. Yes, yeah, he also won the 1600 today at this meet. Um, and you just finished the 3200, which is possibly one of the hardest races in track and field. So what, what made you choose to run this race? Um, well, I guess my coach put me in it, so... Um. But yeah, it's a. I won state in this last year, so um, it's one of been become one of my favorite races to to run. I knew um, the competition would be good in the, in the two miles. So, which do you prefer between the 1600 and the 3200? Ooh, I don't know. It, it's tough to choose. Um, I guess maybe the mile, but I don't know. I actually, I can't say I uh, have a favorite. But. And uh, how do you keep your physical strength? throughout this whole race how do, what do you tell yourself to yeah. really push through really it's just hang on hang on hang on until about the last like 800 or so and then start trying to make a move so it's just um tom sutter and leslie porter were, were great competition they uh switched roles in the front a lot and i just kind of hang on to them to and what's your goal for the rest of the season um just stay competitive try to keep winning races and uh just keep having fun well you did awesome at this meet your whole school has so uh, you'll do great for the rest of the season as well. So thank you so much for having another interview with us. All right. Thank you, guys. <laughs> All right. And now we're in the midst of the first heat, right, of the girls 4x4. Four four. Yeah. Uh, we've, seen, we've seen some really strong performances from Liberty North. Really the top three or four lanes have shown them really strong. Liberty and Liberty North, two rival schools battling with each other. Oh, Grandview and Liberty, my bad. Liberty North in second. Blue Springs South in battle, finishing it out. Very, very strong group. Especially those two front runners in uh, Grandview and Liberty. Yeah, the Liberty and Grandview runners are really starting to pull themselves away as kind of the, the elite talent in the 4x400, the first heat at least. Yeah, they're doing a good job. Excuse me. I got a piece of pizza stuck in my throat there. <laughs> I'm so hungry up here. <laughs> I couldn't wait until this race. So just I had to, I had to just gotta do it. I had to eat that piece of pizza. <laughs> it was delicious. Uh, Grandview start to pull away here with a really good transition handoff going into their anchor leg here. And the battle third just kind of heated up. Liberty North looks like they're pulling away a little bit, making things a little bit interesting.
Liberty North pulling ahead in front of Liberty to give them the second place spot. Grandview's going to come away with this, but let's see if Liberty can pull ahead. And it looks like the Grandview team with a very commanding length for most of it's going to come in first. Liberty North is going to come in second and Liberty is going to come in third. Which was, it was very strong outputting by the last two legs of that Liberty North squad. Making it close for that anchor leg and then finishing it off being able to pass Liberty. And what would be a very close match. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if that, you know, the time that they got, if that would hold up and allow them to sneak in and get some points, uh, you know, for their team. I don't know if it's going to be enough because we got a pretty good final here with, uh, let's see, how many teams we got? One, two, three, four, five, five, four, fifteen and under teams. Yeah, especially with your top three being in your four, five, six in. We some of us, Park Hill of Blue Springs, who I think are easily some of the favorites coming into it tonight. From up here in the press box, it looks like the Park Hill 4x4 team will not be running this evening. But they, but Lee Summit West is running, and they've got one of the most dominant 4x4 squads in the state of Missouri. Yeah, they're coming in at a 4 uh, which is really good. They'll probably have a couple runners break 60 on their splits and just a couple over 60 and so that's pretty good if you can get you can get four four runners in this in this girls event that are close to 60 or breaking 60 yeah that, that really helps so expect beatings from the blue springs and green valley squads both of which have been known to kind of make for lack of a better word waves throughout the throughout things like this And it looks like as they lined up, do we have, is Raytown maybe a scratch? I think Raytown and okay. the Park Hill squad. Did you already do that? Sorry. I yeah. Didn't step away. Well, but I can't, yeah, I think Park Hill is also a scratch. Okay. Which is a big surprise because Park Hill was supposed to be one of the, the stronger teams coming into tonight. Here we go, girls four by four. I would say with only five teams in this heat, then it could be that Grandview has a shot maybe to sneak in there to score yeah, some points definitely. from that first heat. <clears throat> Looks like 
Lee Summit West is already making up distance for starting in that middle zone. Mm -hmm. They're making up quick, too. Yeah, you've already made it up, and there's still a stagger coming on this third turn here. Yeah. Because athletes don't get to cross until they've completed that third turn, then they get to make their way into running in lane one. Lee Summit West definitely made up some Lee good Summit ground here. Some big ground catching up to the yeah Warrensburg team looks strong blue springs runner faded a little bit and a very a little rough on the handoff but after they got it there it was very clean we'll see Lee West is going to cut in now so they'll have a commanding lead Kirkwood girls looking pretty strong Kirkwood is. Blue Springs is making a move on the outside, trying to get into that third spot. Yeah, got to get there before that turn. It looks like she's got there. There you go. That helps. Lee Summit West just seems to be building onto that lead. Oh, the Kirkwood runner is fading. Blue, Blue Springs, Springs is coming around. Yeah, the Lee so Summit West Staley. runner fading as well. That is a strong finish. Very strong finish from Naya Harris. Oh, oh Lee Summit West found a little, a little bit more gas. A little bit more gas in the tank there. Could have used that more on the turn. <laughs> Very good handoff, and now it seems to be an all-out sprint. Blue Springs not backing down from Lee Summit West. Kirkwood having a lot of space to build up to. Our top three, Lee Summit West, Blue Springs, and Staley. All really contesting. Blue well, Springs with a move on the outside. A move. They overtake them. That was a fast move before that turn. And now the lead seems to be building, but as we saw earlier, let's see if he can hold it. Staley makes a move on the outside. Lee Summit West looks like they're losing she's, a little bit of gas around that corner. She's looking pretty strong. Blue Springs runner. Looking very strong. Nice job keeping her good form throughout. This is great. And handing off to Guinevere. We heard her name before in the yeah. fight a long time ago. And very strong a, start. Very strong. Yeah, she's a tough runner. I would say this this would be pretty difficult for Yeah, at least West has got a lot of lot of room to build up. Yeah, and is that Grain Valley right behind her? That's Raytown. Raytown. Looks like at least Summit West is making a move on Staley in third right now. Just to be just barely outpacing each other. Raytown looking like they're about to make a really strong finish. They are. She's making she's making a surge there. Let's see if Guinevere can hold her off. As they near this final turn, Raytown this is really, what gets exciting. really coming up close. <clears throat> this is what gets exciting. And here comes the final push. She's making up some ground. Here you go. Oh, Staley, Staley coming in. Staley sneaking coming on the in. inside. She left the inside open. And it looks like Blue Springs is going to take first, Staley second, Raytown third. Lisa West is going to come in fourth place, and Kirkwood is going to come in fifth. And, you know, that kind of leads me to believe that maybe Lee Summit West didn't run their A lineup. Yeah. Uh, because they came in with the fastest time by four seconds and, you know, ended up not being able to close that out. So I wonder if just they yeah. did replace some athletes who had had a good day, but it's getting colder, and they say, hey, let's let's keep some of our top athletes out of here. But yeah. Blue Springs, a very nice showing. Yeah, very good. That third and fourth leg, um, and we don't have it in front of us who that, that third leg uh, athlete was, but she did a great job making up ground. Yeah, the third leg af the third leg athlete was Elena Tibble. She's nice. a junior, mm. so she's still got a promising career ahead of her. That was that was a very year. strong, very strong. And Guinevere, the anchor leg, is a sophomore. Is that correct? She's a sophomore, and so two very strong runners on the end of that four by four for Blue Springs. That's that's encouraging.
too, but we're lining up and he won. <coughs> squad that somebody scratched and so we threw a okay in there I'm not quite sure because we got the uh, got the eight rockers yeah rockers is on two two is five Ruskin maybe Ruskin and as we line up for this first heat in four by four it looks potentially like Grandview or uh, Ruskin might have Grimview or Ruskin might have scratched, and Blue Springs entered in a B squad, maybe. Maybe that's kind of what it's looking like. Yeah, we're not quite sure, because Blue Springs is supposed to be in this second heat, because they, if they're deciding to run their top guys, they have got the state leading time in the four by four. But I don't know whether they're running the whether they're running their not. top guys or not. Yeah. All right, and now we go to Island, who's got the winning girls 4x4, four four, the Blue Springs Wildcats. Yes, I'm here with the Blue Springs girls, and they just won the 4x4. Four four. So tell, uh, may, uh, introduce yourselves. I'm Lena. Talia. Guinevere. Naya. And tell us, what's some of the stuff you've learned running this event? What things have you learned? You know, what morals have you gained? Honestly, confidence. Doing the 400 is very tiring and it kills you, so that's what I've learned. Yes, I've learned how to sprint better because the 400 really kills you. And uh, the 4x4 four four is the last race, which makes it possibly the most exciting race of a whole track meet. So, um, how do you like running it? How much do you guys love this event? I, I actually love running this event because everybody is like gathered around the track supporting you because it's the very last event. And it just, it's just a lot of fun and exciting. I like it because even though it kills you slowly, it, like, it feels worth it because you have a team that's like there with you the whole time and you're doing it for like, more than just yourself. Exactly. Putting in team spirit is great. Okay, I think Marble wanted to ask a few questions. Yeah, go ahead and throw one of those. Throw that headset on Guinevere so I can ask her some questions. All right. It's just one now. Thank you, girls. Thank you, girls. Okay, Guinevere, you got to hold that mic. You got to hold that mic. You're talking there. Now, I had you in class in my video production class, and I, I never knew you were so tough. You ran that anchor leg really well. Thank you. Yeah, so so how did you feel going into that? Were you confident that, that you all could come away with a win, or did you was it something a big challenge for you? It was pretty nerve-wracking having to try and keep that position. And it was very tough on the last 100. <laughs> yeah, you had a Staley athlete that closed in quick, but you were very strong. You were keeping your knees up down the stretch. What was going through your mind that last 20 meters? I was panicking a little bit because <laughs> I had to just put give all I had and put it really hard, but I made it to the end. <laughs> all right, well, you did a great job, and so uh, congratulations on winning the 4 by 4 here at the Gary Parker Invitational. Thank you. All right, that was the girls' four by four blue sprint that won the uh, thank you so much four by four at the Gary Park Invitational. Yeah, and they they did it with 
very impressive that they struggled within the first leg, but then once their second leg got onto the field, I mean, it was it was pretty much written right there that they were going to take home first. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly why Blue Springs run in the first heat, but I mean, this is our this is our A squad, I believe. Is it, or is this still our is this is this our B squad? They're, they're looking pretty good. That's not, yeah, that's not Marzov. Okay, I think this is our this is our B squad, and they're looking pretty good. Yeah, they're they're, they're looking real good. They're pushing real hard and just not slowing up on the reins that they've got. As they're coming around that final bend, Blue Springs is just going to walk away with, for lack of better words, it's just commanding lead. Yeah. And we do, we do have another quad coming up in this final heat. So we had an opening and decided to throw another team in there. They did very, very well. Oh, they did remarkably well. Yeah, and even if they're not able to get into the you know top six or top four to score points because uh, – because you can only score one relay in here. They did a great job. They should feel good about oh, that. Oh, yeah. And I think the battle squad actually came back and came in second ahead of the rocker squad, which was leading for most of that in the second place spot. But here we go. Here we go. Here we the go. Last, the last race we got going here. Last race and then wait about another half hour while we <laughs> wait for all the field events to come in. Well, I'm not sure we'll do that on our, <laughs> on our live stream here. But this is one of the most exciting events there is in track. So much emotion, so many, so much toughness. The athletes you can see are are gathering around everywhere. You can see them all over the track, getting ready to support their team. Um, so this this is usually gets pretty intense down here. This is the event to be checked into. Now, some big squads to look forward to is the Blue Springs A squad, who are the state leading four by four right now, and they if. The B squad was anything to show for what the A squad's going to be looking like. They're going to be commanding and dominant through most of it. Yeah, and I could say uh, St. Michael's in in lane five. Um, you know they can they can get good right here. They're coming in at 329. Uh, Kirkwood has been strong throughout the meet, so you know they're going to try to bring it. Uh, and so we'll see if Blue Springs can finish off this Gary Parker Invitational with a win. Yeah, it'd be nice to finish off your home meet with two two wins back to back. Yeah, for the girls and boys that'd be a great way to finish. Let's let's hope that happens. Yeah. I remember when I ran the four by four a lot of times I was on the anchor leg, then I would always position my dad right on the end of that, basically that end of that third turn going into the straightaway. So he could tell me either who was behind me or <laughs> if I couldn't see in front of me who was in front of me <laughs> and be screaming at me to try to run faster. Did you hear about the, um, the Olympic diver where his dad... And right before he dove, would flip him off. I didn't hear that. Yeah, Olympic Thanks diver. Thanks for bringing up on a school broadcast, though. <laughs> Fine. Points deducted. Points deducted. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to this race. We got Matt Mars off. Uh, who I assume is going to be anchoring it for the Blue Springs team, as yeah. he was the the winner in the 400, who ran a sub 50 open, and so it'll be interesting to see, you know, how fast his split can be. Uh, Unofficial see if we stop get a watch already. on this.
think in that first leg we got, for Blue Springs, we got Ziggy Affo, I think. I believe that's who's on the first leg. He was one of, uh, one of the corners for me in this past football season. Raytown's starting off real strong. Yeah. As they make that first turn. There you go, gotta keep going south. South's not looking too bad out there. I know they're in lane eight, but. St. Michael so far, second place. <clears throat> No, that's not that's not Ziggy. This next leg is Alex Hughes, that's for sure. Look at he that first came off that transition running. He went from fourth to first and then lost it in a heartbeat. There he gets to cut in now. So he needs to maintain and keep that stride. Kirkwood's coming up behind him. He's get he's got to fend this guy off. Make him run around you. Make him run around you. Looks like he's gonna get around him on the turn. <clears throat> uh, come on, Alex. Finish strong. Is that Green Valley in the lead. Yeah, Green Valley. Green Valley's looking strong. Really strong squad coming out here. Come on, Alex. Finish, finish, finish. We'll see if... See how his third leg can be lost Valley a little ground there. Kirkwood really starting to build that <coughs> lead, but Blue Springs, whoever's running that third leg, starting to close it as best as he can. Yep. And you never know if a team maybe ran their best leg on the third leg to try to open up a little bit of yeah. the league. We'll see because we know that Blue Springs has got the best 400 runner on the track right now. And Matt Marzoff ready to take the baton. So Grand we'll Valley see how this thing Kirk closes out. Grand Valley and Kirkwood look like they're starting to lose a little bit of speed. Just get it finish out strong. Get him close. Get Matt close. All right. Let's Matt make looks sure fired up. Handoff. Oh, a little bit of a bobble. Matt's got it now. He's got good speed, and look at him eat, him eat him up on that turn. There you go. And he takes Kirkwood on the outside, and he passes Grand Valley on the outside, cuts back in. That's impressive and right there. There he goes. Kirk making him on the outside, passing Grand Valley for second. The question is, is the Kirkwood runner going to have enough tank in, enough gas in the tank to Pat Math? I don't think he will with Matt Marzoff closing this thing out. You can see all the athletes now getting very, very excited. This is an exciting finish to a race. They're all out there cheering. And now here they come down the stretch. Kirk Matt's would make a move. move. Oh, he's not, he's not tightening up too much a little bit now. He's going to hold on like to this. Blue Springs is going to win it. All right. Kirk in second and Grain Valley in third. That's great. They might not get the overall team championships tonight, but for Blue Springs to – Win the girls four by four, and then the boys four by four. And that's a great seats. way. That's a great way to yeah to end the evening. And those were two really strong performances. And hats off to that Kirkwood team, making sure that they didn't give up on any part of that.
ever walk walk them down the mat at fifty yard line. To the fifty. Let's walk down here a little bit farther if the team can if that fellow play team can walk down where Matt Mars out there. He's he's sitting close to on the track, he's stretching. <coughs> yeah. And then we'll we'll talk about their four by four win and then we'll probably finish with you just giving your overall thoughts on the meet and your first experience sideline reporting. Yeah, you can actually just come down. You could walk down here. When he's ready, you could walk down here on the track and just get right in front of Caden. And then Caden can... Well, how much How much battery you got? Yeah. Okay. No, don't worry about it. We'll get, we'll get the camera up here. right in front of him, just like towards the edge of the track. <coughs> yeah. All right, so walk. Okay. Just have him follow you. While we're waiting to get an interview down with the by 400 winning teams, the girls' javelin throw updates have just come in. Uh, in first place, we got Maddie Harris from Lisa on the West, 140 feet. In second place, we have Paige Van Blarkham from Warrensburg at 119. In third place is Sarah Fletcher from Lee Summit, throwing 119. In fourth place, we have Riley Howerton from Liberty at 113 feet. And in fifth place, we have Sabrina Lane from Park Hill throwing 112 feet. And in sixth place, we have Carly Romans from Grain Valley throwing 112 feet. Can you get the guys now on the 4x4 out of there saying sorry? All right, and now we have eyes for our last event winners of the night with the Blue Springs High School 4x4 team. Thank you, Marvel. Uh, we just got done with the 4x4, four four, and I'm here with the Blue Springs boys who pulled in a first. Um, how do you all feel after that 4x4? Four four? I, I feel tired, but I feel good. Tired, but good. I feel accomplished. 
feel like I'm ready to run another football court. <laughs> the 4x4, four four, I would say, is by far the most exciting race of the night because it is the last. <laughs> um, and what do you guys, sorry, um, what kept your energy and hopes up throughout the night waiting for this event? Um, Get the mic, sir. Probably the fact that my team was relying on me. That. Uh, just the fact that 4x4 four four is a huge part of uh, track. And it's like one of the major point gainers. It's a tradition in this program. You ask Cusack about it. He runs his program off the 400. So. Do any of you have any goals for the rest of the season? All state, possibly All-American. All-State, 50 point. Make the 404 team at State. I've been on this since my sophomore year, and we've got second back-to-back -back years. My sophomore and junior year, I want to win this thing this year. Uh, Asir, uh, how do you feel about your last season of track in high school? Uh, it's going great so far. I just want to keep it rolling. That's it. Okay, how do you guys plan on cooling off tonight, you know, celebrating this win? Uh, I'm going to go home. Before, actually, before I go home, I'm going to eat some Chipotle. <laughs> um, yeah, about it. Do a little cool down, um, shake legs out, stretch a little bit, go to sleep. So we'll cool down, make you some food. It's just die bad, really. <laughs> Go home and see my mom. All right, well, you guys did amazing tonight. Thank you so, so much. Uh, I think that's about it. Uh, thank you, guys. All right, and Eisen, what do you think? What were your overall thoughts of, of the meet here today and what you saw from down there? This was an incredible meet, one of the most energetic and happy ones I've ever been to. It was it was crazy to see how happy people were, were to be here tonight because of the random cold weather. But uh, I, I'm very lucky to be here. I'm very happy to be here, even though I might be shivering just a little bit. But, uh, yeah, I had a great time, and I know everybody else did here, too. The audience had an awesome time watching the competitors. All right, well, it was a great meet, and you did a great job, for, especially for your first time reporting from the sideline. So we hope you had a great time, too. I did. Thank you so, so much. All right. Well, Justin, that was a great meet. Yeah, that was, that was fantastic. Yeah, that was, uh, that was exciting. We so, saw a lot of good performances. We had uh, several uh Performances by at least from Battle High School on the girls' side. I know we had Paige McGee, who we were announcing all the time. Um, we had Serene Williams. Uh, and Battle looked dominant on the girls' side, didn't they? Battle looked – they looked very good. And not only did they look good, but they, they presented themselves well as mm -hmm. not only like a school and as like an organization. They just presented themselves in a, in a likable – and very like humble manner. It was great to see a bunch of a bunch of girls be dominant and still be humble and understand how hard everyone else in their or and their events and stuff have worked to get to the point that they were. Yeah, and on the boys' side, we had great performances by uh, Demonte Banks from Grandview in the 110 hurdles. Um, our, the four by two battle did a great job. The four by one battle did a great job. I mean, we we. We joked earlier about saying that name over and over again, but they just had a strong squad um, on both both teams. Yeah, and then as mentioned before, their their field events probably are going to help them a lot when it comes down to the final scoring. Being able to put three people in both pole vault for both groups, and then several long and triple jumpers. I mean, they just overall they were just set for success. Yeah, and um, we had Christian Baker uh, on the boys' side as well, who did a great job from Kirkwood. Oh, yes. Uh, I mean, he just he ran a 426 in the 1600 in these conditions, and then in the 3200 he dominated. Um, I believe he had had a PR in the 3200 in conditions like this. I mean, he was very impressive. Yeah, he's gonna, he's definitely gonna be fun going into the state meet on the 16 and 3200, see if he can improve his time any, especially with hopefully the conditions being a lot more appropriate to run. Right. And uh, Cooper Wise, another name that, that in the high jump who came in with a 6'10 and, and jumped 6'7 today, which, again, windy conditions, jumps a 6'7. 
uh, to win the high jump. That yeah. was very impressive as well. He's going to do phenomenal at state, mm -hmm. if not probably win the whole thing in the high jump. Uh, Johnny Beckins from East Summit. We knew he was a great athlete. It was on a couple relays, but then uh, jumped 24 feet in the long jump. I mean, there's some times where uh, 23 feet will win state, and he jumps at 24 feet, a foot farther than anybody else. Today. That was very, very impressive. Yeah. I know we weren't able to show a lot of those field events in our first time live streaming, yeah. but uh, all those athletes did a great job. Yeah, and as we're still talking here, there's a couple field events going on. A girl from Battle just jumped a 10-6 pole vault. Mm, nice. So that's still that's a still going on. Going. Yeah, and so we're not we're not able to give final results here as we kind of close out the broadcast. Yeah. But, uh, you know, those watching can go to Mo Mile Split to see kind of the results. Um, there's various places that will be able to read about it, uh, whether it be in the Kansas City Star, Blue Springs Examiner, or the various newspaper and media outlets in, in different cities. Um, but it, uh, it was overall a, a really fun time. Yeah. We, we did a great job. And we got to thank our, our crew in here. Let's get a shout out to our behind the scenes crew. Okay. They've done a great job for us all night. We've got our camera crew here. Look at a shot down there of, of Caden. There he is. There he is. Did a great job. Ben Ben's up top. He's been up top on the roof. It's more windy than anything. Oh, and man. Ben, turn the camera around and wave to the audience. Tell Ben to turn the camera around and so that they can see his face. Ben, can you hear me? Okay, hey, I want you to turn the camera around so everybody can see. You can give a wave because you've been working hard up there. Yeah, you have the entire time. Turn that camera. There you are. Ben, look at him. He. <laughs> That's all right. I told you you could wear whatever you want to do because you to be up top the entire time and all that wind, and now the wind has almost completely died down now that we're wrapping up. <laughs> well, you did, you did a great job, Ben, so thanks a lot. All right, and then our other K operator here, Tim, is shaking his head no. Tim, we got Caden. We got Caden down there. Tim, Tim, turn the Tim just giving a thumbs up. Okay, <laughs> Tim says I'm not getting on camera. <laughs> um, but no, we did a great job, and we had my dad here who running the producer, being the producer today, Bam, helping each other out. He did a great job. Good job, good job, good job. Well, we had a great time here. At an, we had uh, again, really don't, time. we don't have all team scores in yet because there's still a couple of field events going on, but we encourage everybody to find out uh, how the team did. We know Battle yeah. is very strong, so it might be that they've secured it already. Yeah, um, battle, battle looked really good yeah. throughout all the events that we're really paying attention to, and then even those that we weren't able to see, they just they had at least one person in every event somewhere that would give that would help their team out in some way yeah well from all of us here at blue springs high school we thank you for tuning in to the gary parker invitational and we look forward to the rest of the track season and seeing how these athletes do as they progress toward state absolutely thank you guys